Hello everybody and welcome to our Summoners War European League playoffs day number two. This is the final day of our Summoners War European League. Everything has been building up to this right now and we're getting ready to get on with all of the action of today's matches. I am of course Sam and joined once again by the wondrous Mr. Seishizu. How are you? Doing very good on this Saturday afternoon and hope you guys are doing that as well. Yeah, exactly. It's a different time for us than the usual. Over the past seven weeks we've been here at wednesdays eight o'clock but also yesterday we were here on a friday at eight o'clock today here two o'clock saturday ready for these summoners war european league playoffs to take place now obviously we've only got four players left out of the total 12 that joined us at the start of the summoners war european league those four players being of course obabo pinkroyd guts the berserk and pafix four very very strong contenders say how do you think they're feeling right now I definitely do think nervous, but in the end, I spoke a bit with some of the players yesterday and they definitely did say that uh, they really like to be in the momentum. So for the players that played yesterday, Pafix and Guts, they are a little bit in momentum. They could have been like playing yesterday, seeing their matches through. However, on the other side, we have Obaba and Pinkroyd that could have been like just chill, watching, grab some popcorn, a nice can of soda next to you. I just check out all of the things that your opponent's going to do. But first of all, 
those two players would have to face against each other. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully they've been taking notes, like you said, with that popcorn or with that can of soda, but they probably will have been watching yesterday to see who they're going to be facing today, obviously. There is that first match, which will be between Ababo and Pink Floyd, kind of a repeat of our week number seven, actually. And since we had two matches of those two guys, it's going to be a thriller. Now, obviously, we're in our final day of the Summoners War European League. Therefore, all of the matches from today are now going to be best of sevens. It's the first time in Summoners War history that we're going to be doing best of sevens. So how excited are you to see a best of seven? Yeah, it's definitely a different dynamic because you're able to lose two and still not be on losing points. So that's definitely a thing that we could maybe see like a full reverse sweep. Something? Uh, are we going to see a 4-0? We don't know. Is it going to be more of like a 4-1, a little bit in the middle? I have no clue what to expect today, so I'm definitely curious to see how that will go. Exactly. The combinations of these scores could be very different from what we're used to. If we do see any 4-0s, I think it shows that the player has definitely prepared their homework and is ready to really sweep the floor with all of their opponents in this Summoners War European League. It's going to be interesting to see exactly how they combat this as well, say, because... Similar with the best of five, sometimes we get the same pre-bans in the first set as we do in the third set. Are we going to have the same all the way through this time? Or maybe somebody has even prepared some different drafts to be able to play a little bit more widely on the meta, preparing for that turn one, preparing for that turn two. We've seen in the past that most European players tend to go for that turn one, I would say, most of the time. But how do you think it's going to go today? Do you think we'll see a lot of turn one action or will people be able to change things up and adapt? Well, I would say that um, Pavix is really turn two focused. I would say Pinkroyd is very adaptive on turn one, turn two. I would say Guts the same thing and Obabo's mostly turn one focused. So I think those are the kind of differences between those. However, for pre-bands, I do think we're going to see a lot of repeat pre-bands like match one is going to be match three, two is going to be four, etc. However, it might be that if you're uncomfortable with your draft that you did, for example, in match one and you lost it, you could actually switch things up in like a three or a five. So... For that reason, I'm definitely curious to see if, because you're also in the match that you played just now, and then you have to remember the one before, but even the one more before that. So you, there's a lot of things going into your mind, and I think it's going to be more towards like muscle memory, what do you not like to play against, rather than saying like, okay, I remembered match one when I'm in match five, let's do it differently. Exactly. You can see in front of you now, guys, our playoffs bracket. For our playoffs day two, we do have that first match with the Barbo and Pink Road, where the winner will advance all the way through to the final, showing the importance of how it was to get a good league standing from the previous seven weeks. We also have Pafix and Guts the Berserk, who made it through day one. Like we saw as well yesterday, say a lot of three ones. Obviously, it's not possible today in a best of seven, but is that ominous for what might be coming a little bit later? Maybe we do just add one on each, four twos? Yeah, it, it could be 4-2s, it could maybe even still be 4-1s, but it's definitely interesting to see where you have four completely different matches and they all technically have the same result. Yeah, they all do right there. Obviously, Ababo, Pinkroyd, Pafix, and Guts the Berserk are all going to be playing today. Let us know in chat who you are rooting for, who you want to be the first ever Summoners War European League champion. It's the first of its kind and these guys are all playing for part of that €10,000 cash prize with the winner taking 5 thousand euros home that's a very tasty little treat that they might be getting on this saturday afternoon say obviously some of these guys have been around before in kind of swcs um do you think we're gonna have a repeat of maybe a back to back to back to back champion with a pink ride it, it could definitely be possible like in the end we have seen pink ride still performing very well on leaderboards like every season once again he has been performing exceptionally good in the last three iterations of swc so yeah, if if you would have to put statistics to it and then saying like, oh, I have to guess for someone, Pink Roy is probably an easy one to guess for. But on the other hand, I do know we have a lot of Obabo fans. Like always when I read the chat, everyone is saying like, is Obabo playing today? Obabo playing today? Anyone? O o Obabo playing today? So yeah, Obabo is playing today, guys. So let's see how he will do. <laughs> exactly. And there he is. He's right in front of you on the screen right now. Daddy Obaba, as some people like to call him right there, has achieved a legend rank before, but has never really done further in that SWC. Is the Summoners War European League going to be his first chance to really claim some medals or trophies from his RTA? What do you think, say? I definitely do think he has a very good chance, but they already are all medalists, except for the match from uh, Pafix and... No, wait, there's, there's four spots, so I've, actually everyone here today is going to get a medal already. 
Yeah, they are. There is a medal for first all the way through to fourth. You saw them at the beginning showing on the screen the gold, silver, bronze, and even the black for the fourth as well. So everyone will take something home. They'll all take home part of that cash prize as well. So Obaba, very, very strong player, but today going to be playing also against Pinkroyd. <sighs> Pinkroyd, you know, the history, if it was to play itself again, could be a back-to-back -back champion. You can see there he loves his Tian Lang. Very strong with the Julian at the moment as well. Say, so how do you like his chances? I definitely do like his chances. It's one of those players that's very well at adapting and just changing things up. And best of seven can give you the most amount of chances to adapt to your play style and just play completely different. So I definitely do fa uh, think that playing best of sevens favors Pinkroyd rather than him playing best of twos, what we have seen in the league days before. Exactly. These two guys actually face off against each other in Summoners War European League week number seven, say. Uh, splitting the points, it was 1-1 between Ababo and Pinkroyd. The first match where Ababo's Zima managed to carry him all the way through to the win against a very strange Shihu pick. And in that second set, Pinkroyd's Coco picked off with a Julian. Oh no, I mean Ababo's Coco was picked off with a Julian, allowing Pinkroyd to reclaim that one point there. So you can see we're getting things ready to go into our playoffs day two, round three, match one. Can you repeat your order, please? I'll take one big brain squishy robo nem trap with a side of Trinity. That will be five subs, please. Thank you, sir. <laughs> do you think we might see those monsters or was that purely an exhibition match that we saw the last time? I do think that was more of an exhibition match, more of a saying like, okay, I don't really want to showcase my strategies for next week. So now we're in the next week. Let's see what we have. Let's get into it. So we've got it here. A Barbo versus Pink Road. Remember, the winner of this best of seven match will advance straight away into the finals. It's going to be all to play for right now. Get into those finals and securing where you are going to be. pre say, are we expecting something along the lines of an Etna or are we going for those LDs already? I would say Atna is definitely a good potential. I do see Obabo has first pick, so if he likes to play around that same style that he did in the last week where it's picking Hagen or banning Hagen, he has the first pick, so he doesn't necessarily have to ban it. So Obabo could go for a ban on LDs, maybe a Julian, maybe a Light Monkey. And on the other side, I would say Pinkroot maybe goes for that Atna, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've seen just how strong that Etna obviously is. We are going to see then the bands coming in there. It's going to be the Julian and it's going to be the Hey Gang. So what do you think that signals already from the side of these players? Well, I definitely do like it from Pinkroyd because in the end, if you play the Light Monkey, playing against the Hey Gang is not that nice in the first place. So this opens him up where he probably expected his Julian to be gone and he still has potential to lock in that Light Monkey at a later moment. Yeah, we see Ababa looking in straight away there, that Etna. We know how good the artifacts and runes are on that Etna as well. So do you think Pinkroyd is going to be already adapting into a different turn play? Or is he going to be relying on maybe something we saw yesterday with kind of the Chi Wus, the Tian Langs? Yeah, for Pinkroyd, it's always hard to say what his like general play style is. He has also been picking up Etna quite a bit himself. In this case, opens... Okay, more general, like I was going to say double fires, maybe a little bit early. It is against Wind, but we have the Velajul and the Cigar being picked up. Two units that we see a lot in the Summoners War League so far. Yeah, I was just going to say, say, actually before the stream, we were just looking at some of the combinations with Cigar uh, in terms of the stats. And actually with Velajul was very, very strong if what I remember right. Yeah, that's correct. It's actually uh, on the leaderboards right now in the Special League. One of the strongest combinations between the two uh, units itself. On the other side, we do see a Zima and a Chandra. So we don't have a Chandra Cigar combination. But definitely still combinations that are very strong. In this position, you could definitely pick up something along the line of a Juno or a Fire Monkey. Those units will absolutely be good over here. But decides to go for a more plus, of course, that very strong Tian Lang. Yeah, I mean, if we look back on that first set from the last match between these two players, so Zima did carry a Barber through to get that first set win. But right now, how is he going to respond there as well, say? Yeah, it's definitely an interesting one. I would say that a Fire Monkey on the side of Obaba would also do very good because a Fire Monkey technically can clear most of the units on the side of Pinkroyd as well. Plus, that means that he doesn't play against it. However, he decides to go for two very fast units as the Adriana and the Sonia. We've seen a Glorious play with that uh, yesterday. Didn't work to that great of success, but let's see how it works out as Pinkroyd locks in that Ren. Yeah, so it is a little bit of a speed contest in those last four, three picks we've just seen right there, say. So. Hopefully their rune quality is going to show it through enough. It is going to be banned on the Chandra, taking away that speed lead on the side of Ababa. 
and the Ren is also being blocked out on the side of Pink Road. We've got the more speed league coming in for Pink Road as we're going into our Summoner's War European League playoffs day two. Round three, match one, set one between Ababo and Pink Road. Say, Aetna going. Can she get a stun? Yes. Yes, she definitely needed that stun because if that stun wasn't there, the more would have moved and therefore also take over the match. In this position, there's just an attack buff, a speed buff on that uh, Sonya, and Sonya is going to do so much damage and definitely. Uh, Pinkroyd is on the back foot here on this match already. He is, but Sagar does have that skill 3 available, can look to strip and obviously reset going into that Etna, gets the cool time and the provoke. Does get the cool time and the provoke, but we still have a silence on that Valadu and Valadu is not going to be taking any extra turns at this position, so the units of Pinkroyd are not looking too lively, can definitely take out that more as well, and we can drop bombs. Do we land the bomb? Do we land the stun? We do land the bomb and we do land the stun, so that's not going to be a very lively Valadu anytime soon. No, the villager will be getting that bomb on the next detonation right now. And Sonya can follow up with skill one, just dealing a bit more damage to see if that bomb can take out the villager. Yeah, in most cases, villager is based on pretty high defense, not that high on HP. So definitely a bomb will take a lot of damage from here. 26k because of the attack buff. That's a lot of damage. And that also takes out the villager with a very quick victory for Obabo. Wow, Obabo, they're coming out with that first set win against Pinkreutzer. It just showed that taking that first turn and managing to really kind of outspeed uh, Pinkroyd's draft there, couldn't even get a turn off. Yeah, exactly. It was mainly that more was supposed to be setting up for the rest of the units. However, without the speed lead, we have the Athna being on a 119 base speed and also being incredibly fast on the side of uh, Obabo. Just taking that first turn, denying the turn of the more with that skill three and then simply taking over from there. Yeah, we've said it time and time again, say how strong that Etna pick is for a Barbo, right? Right now, Pink Road will be having that first pick. So looking at the pre bands it is going to be that Etna taken out of the game and a Tian Lang in response from a Barbo. Yeah, definitely interesting to see the Tian Lang being pre banned as well. Uh, I would definitely say it is a good unit to pre ban But now the big question is, is Pink Road going to go for Hei Gang first? Yes, he is going to go for Hei Gang first. Yep, Hei Gang is on the field. Let's see if a Barbo is going to respond like in the previous ones where we saw not always wanting to have a Veladule with a hair gang, so maybe an early steal, or is he going to continue with his turn one? Oliver, with that 33% speed lead as well, say, partnering it up with a very fast Adriana. Ooh, going back to the Adriana, so that's definitely signaling into probably going once again for that Sonya kind of comp. Vanessa is absolutely the right pickup on that one, and a Light Monkey. A little bit of an early pick on a Light Monkey, but I definitely do like it in this position. Yeah, so we've got there Vanessa, the speed lead, obviously, with that third skill as well. Can revive if a Sonya does come out on the field right now from a Barber. Do you think if he continues this turn one, who's he going to pick? I definitely do think that if you have the Adriana locked in already, you kind of have to double down on it of saying like, okay, I'm going to lock in that first turn. Because what we also saw yesterday is where if you go towards more of a Bruce style right now, you might end up with a pretty strange draft. And Obabo definitely goes for a turn one composition with the Wind Robo and a Daphnis. Yeah, Daphnis, how dangerous that skill three can be if the defense break lands and gets all of the damage through right now. Obviously, he's still got a revive at the moment on the side of Pink Road with that Vanessa. But how are you going to change things up now? I definitely would think that Pink Road also has to double it down on saying like, okay, I'm still going to be focusing turn one. And I definitely do like it with the Chiwu. I also kind of like it with the more. So both options are pretty good. I would say that the Chiwu is a little bit better if you leave the Adriana in. Because the more is not that great into stripping multiple debuffs. Whereas the Chiwu is actually very good at doing that. Yeah, very good with his skill three. Obviously, it can apply the glancing as well where needed. Do you think Ababa needs to lock in another speed lead? I definitely do think he has to go for a speed lead right now because if he goes for a Bruiser unit right now, he's probably going to be losing his Oliver. And I think the units on the side of Pink Red could, for example, deal with an Antares or a Douglas. But still locking in that Douglas. Let's see if it actually goes through. Douglas gameplay. In most matches, obviously, it's pre uh, it's banned out during this drafting phase because they can't deal with it. But like you said there, maybe there's enough on the side of Pink Roy to get through that. Who do you like for the bans? I would still like to see the Oliver being banned because that will guarantee Pink Roy to get the first turn. Sure, you will have to be fighting that Douglas. It will be difficult, but I do think he will manage that way. Let's find out then. This is where the mind games are coming into play between these guys. Oliver is banned out as well as the Kitan Dasheng, allowing Pink Roy to get that 33% speed lead and the attack lead on the side of a Barbo. It's our Summoner's War European League playoffs day two, set number two between a Barbo and Pink Roy. Chiwu is taking that first turn. 
does get glancing. Does get a lot of glancing and already doing quite some damage on both the Robo and the Daphnis. The interesting thing is every time that you uh, go for a glancing on the Douglas, you will actually get a little bit of attack bar by the Hay Gang as well. So that's definitely a combination that is pretty strong. Plus you have to keep in mind the Chiwu skill too, if used at the right position, will never be glanced by the Douglas. So that is definitely one of those core mechanics that you can use to actually try to get kills in. Oh, big sleep onto that Daphnis as well, right there, say. Hey Gang has the second skill available if wanting to. Yeah, definitely an interesting position. I think he's saving it for the moment where the pure vanilla cookie will actually use the skill 3. In this case, it's not there yet, can only go for a slight bit of healing. But he's saving that just to uh, get rid of those uh, buffs at a later moment. Oh, and Vanessa obviously then managing to kill off that robo, allowing Daphnis to take a turn, but it only has that first skill available. This is where Douglas needs to start picking up some speed. Yeah, and definitely that glancing on the Chiwu helps a lot, because in the end, if you already glance the unit, it's just so much more likely to actually keep that glancing on the field. In this case, this is where you can lock in that skill 2 damage. Does do a good amount of damage on that uh, Douglas right there. Definitely is, and hey Gang as well, applying even more glancing onto that Douglas right now. He's going to be targeting the damage into that cookie at the moment, because any hits on that Douglas could come with a revenge. Also, placing that uh, or that buff block is very crucial on that Douglas, but he's really trying to take out that Douglas right now, and he's once again gets a crit animation. Does take out quite some damage on this unit. Absolutely not one going with wind, but let's see if he can actually manage to take it out. A little bit of healing going on back onto that Douglas. Definitely, a little bit of healing is always nice for that Douglas. He is going to be built on vampires. He's going to get more health as the match goes on right now. Vanessa only with that first skill available. Just going to put a little bit more chip damage into that cookie. Ooh, and that is a, a dead Chiwu. And Chiwu was the core unit to actually be taking out this Douglas. So definitely not really favorable for Pinkroyd in this position. But let's see if he can get a revive off pretty soon. Yeah, Vanessa's really close to getting that revive available as well right now. Hey gang, all skills available at the moment. Target into that Douglas, but he does get a revenge. Does get a revenge once again, taking quite some damage, but gets a double revenge, nearly taking out that Chung Pong. If you revive right now, Douglas will take the next move, and with the next move of the Douglas, it will instantly take out that Chiwo most likely again. So we're definitely looking at a Douglas solo at this position. Yeah, let's see. Douglas does have that second skill available. Is it going to be enough? It is to get rid of that Chiwo off the field. Yeah, it's definitely quite a lot of damage, and we have seen Douglas being disappointing before. In this position, for Ababo, this Douglas is absolutely not disappointing because it's taking out all of the units. However, we're not completely there yet. If we do get some hits in, we do have glancing right now. Oh, it's it's not done yet. No, it's not done yet right now. Douglas is very close. He's to gonna win. Vanessa? <laughs> Big, Big Rod just did it. The Vanessa, that's the thing. In the end, it's a 50% check. If you roll the dice on a 1 to 2, two times on the right moment, you get that armor break in, you get that damage in, and then you kill the Douglas. That's why we have been saying Douglas is often such a disappointing unit. Like, would you call this like, oh, a super luck moment? Maybe, but in the end, it's 50-50. You have to roll that twice and you pretty much kill it at a late moment. Exactly, the favor or the odds were in Pinkroyd's favor right there for that as he takes that set win to even things up at 1-1 one -one between Ababo and Pinkroyd. Crazy stuff to see already, say. Let's see if the pre-bans are going to be similar to that first round now. Obviously, Ababa will have the Etna in his hands if he wants to choose it. Who are you liking for the pre-bans? Do you think we'll see the same? I think we're going back to the same because in the end, we do know that the players don't really like to play that much into the Hagen. Ooh, actually switching it up. No Adrian on the field, so... That is also where I said before, Pinkroyd is very good at adapting. He saw in that first match like, oh, that snipe, he was done in a few seconds. And that snipe was all enabled by that Adriano. So just take Adriano off the field. You know that Obaba will have that hay gang, but you can also just play around it and see what it goes from there. So probably going back to Sagar kind of style. Actually pretty early Tia Lang. And Tia Lang is actually one of the strongest counters on the battlefield in all of Summoners War against that hay gang. So that's definitely a very strong unit to lock in there. Yeah, and partnering up with the speed lead being that more as well. Like you said, say, with that passive from Tianlang. Any of the attack bar, he's going to be eating away at their attack bar to get it for himself. A Barbo right now. Do you think he's going to continue or is this the moment to pivot? I would definitely say that Etna in this position already signals I have to ban that Tianlang because Tianlang is also a strong counter against the Etna. So if you double down right now on an Etna, you pretty much already have to be banning that Tianlang. With the Shizuka, that's definitely an interesting pick. We haven't seen that unit all too much in the Summer's War League. No, we haven't at all, but when can be used in the right spot, obviously she is like that memory foam mattress. She'll remember all of the debuffs that have come out on the field. 
Give them to all your opponents and she'll keep all of the buffs on her side of the field. Do you think Pinkroyd continues here? Looking at a sec mech, good to get some skill 3 cool time going on. Yeah, definitely the skill 3 cool time is very strong against that uh, Shizuka, but also strong against the Atna. So two, definitely one of those units that are saying like, okay, I don't really want you to take crucial turns, but you do have your skills also locking in the Chung Punk. In this position, Obabo, are you going to be doubling down on Bruiser style? Because the Juno definitely would be very strong. Smicer that he's looking to lock in right now, also a very strong pick. Yeah, very strong. We know how good it was over yesterday as well. So the silences and just being on the field is super annoying. Getting those pushbacks, getting the silences, and a Mehu Wang, we are going to see some monkey business. How do you think Pink Road responds? Ooh, those are definitely very dangerous bruiser units. So Pink Road could double down right now on saying like, okay, I'm going to join with a final bruiser unit or just going to try to AoE CC. However, AoE CCing is pretty difficult because he does know that that Athna will outspeed his more. So maybe he doesn't have the right setup for that. Yeah, maybe not. He's thinking right now how he's going to respond to the units on the side of a Barbo's field let's see how he responds to that it's going to be with a vela jewel there say so using the immunity from that skill three who do you like for the bands oh vela is pretty an interesting unit because it's bringing a little bit of everything but also nothing really specifically so pretty interesting pick on that last one i would say that he probably has to take out the fire monkey because the fire monkey i could see the fire monkey dealing with all of the units on the side of pink Road. yeah we saw yesterday just how much the monkey can deal with all of the stacks that it gets and it'll be getting them quite quickly looking at some of the units on the field right there going a lot of aoe damage let's see the bands it is going to be the segment and the etna is respected on the side of pink Roy. we get the hp lead from shizuka the speed lead from more on the side of pink Roy. as we're going into our summoners war european league playoffs day two set number three it's one apiece between a and pink Roy. that more going first <laughs> and getting all of these strips so that's very crucial in this case you could go for armor breaks does go for armor breaks pretty early are we gonna get increase on the uh, shizuka we do not get an increase on shizuka so shizuka will have her skill up and i'm not sure if pinkroid also saw that because during those skills always so many things happen at the same time but he's looking at taking out that smizer pretty fast yeah he is looking to try and take it out right now more only with that first skill available maybe not gonna be enough damage to go in so landing the attack break instead on the mehu wang Oh, and she gets a go. Yeah, she gets a go, and she was not pushed back at posi that position. Stripping the most crucial target right there, the Tian Leng that was about to move. Still taking her own life, but we also have the uh, Shizuka taking a very crucial turn at the moment where Valajul actually doesn't have any immunity. Yeah, he doesn't have immunity, and there's the silence on him as well right now. With that defense break, and Monkey adding with a stun. Yeah, that will definitely take quite some time to get the Velajul back up. But in the meantime, the units of Obabo are not looking that lively, except for the Monkey. So this is definitely all eyes on the Monkey of Obabo. Oh, I'm managing to get the stuns there as well from Hair Gang. Does she look to revive already with the Smiter? They don't think she has the bomb ready right now. Yeah, I also don't think that she has the bomb ready. And it's in this position, looking forward to reducing the cool time on that Hagen, giving it a little bit extra protection with that Soul Protect. But all eyes are still on that Monkey. If the Monkey doesn't get a glance here from that skill too, because I do think that Pinkroyd should be looking at trying to glance it. Ooh, he doesn't get it. And obviously stripping with hair gang on the field does allow the cleanse right now he's gonna have enough to take out that villager but more skill two can do a lot of damage more skill two can definitely do quite some damage but while being glanced it's a little bit less so we're definitely looking at that tian lang can he maybe at some point land a good armor break but he still has to be dealing with his other units we have serious matter pushing back the full attack bar of that monkey that is very crucial but we have the monkey going online right now skill two do we get a skill two in skill one we do get a skill two in skill one does not manage to stun so he will receive an armor break added himself yeah the armor rate is going to be huge from right now because more can deal in more damage he can try and heal again though he can try and heal again but still that armor break is sticking and we have the more moving after this with his spin to win on that second skill doing a lot of damage on those armor breaks with a victory for pinkroyd pinkroyd taking it up then two to one against the barber remember this is a best of seven right now so it's still all to play for we might get mixed sides points on both of them let's find out as we're going into our set number four say very crucial there you saw then that the more just being on the field and doing more damage managing to take out that smicer quite early not allowing it to get online right yeah absolutely and that smicer definitely was on nemesis so it was boosting a little bit up more from there but in the end it was the only healing was the smicer himself so from that reason at some point if you take it out there's a lot of cc gone from the side of obaba 
Yeah, same free bans in set four then from what we had in set two. So it is the Tian Lang and it is going to be the Etna. I'm pretty sure then maybe it signals Pink Roy taking that Hei Gang first pick to steal it away from a Barbo. Yeah, we once again go into that Hei Gang position. So that once again enables Pink Roy to maybe go for a draft based on that Light Monkey later, which was uh, also post banned in that second match before. Yeah, a Barbo. Is he going to lock down into his familiar place that we've seen? He does have Adriana again. We've seen it early picked before. This time with the Oliver and the Eshe, so still signaling is going very fast. Yeah, he definitely goes very fast, but it's also the amount of rune depth that Obabo has to showcase this many fast units. We have seen like four or five different units already on a super fast Swift set, so definitely interesting. However, Pinkroid is going to be playing around the combination that we see with Layla, Tomoe and a Hay Gang pretty often. The, uh, the core way of actually killing this kind of team is sniping things out. Is that also what Obama's going to be playing? He's going to play the Zima and definitely one of those snipe units. Yeah, the silence is coming out from Zima can be very useful right now. We're seeing Pink Road respond with a Ren, a very high best speed with another speed lead. Oh, yeah, second speed lead on the side of the field with the Tomoe of the 24 and the Smath on the 33. Yeah, two definitely uh, units saying like, okay, we're going to be speed contesting. However, it's somewhat interesting to say because in the end, if the Ren is banned out, you are going to be outsped. However, with this position, Obabo is forced to lock in another speed lead as well. So in this uh, position, what kind of speed lead fits the most? Because all of the speed leads that are out there are somewhat counted by that Hey Gang if you're going to leave that one on the field. Yeah, definitely. So it's his choice right now, obviously. 33s are people like the Vanessa. He does have that Trinity as well, but I'm not sure we're going to see it during this matchup right now. So instead, looking at a Cla Clara? Yeah, Clara. So that's definitely banning out that Hey Gang. As I was mentioning, the speed leads are counted by Hey Gang. Well, Clara is a hundred thousand percent bad or like counted by Hey Gang. So in this case, I do expect that Hey Gang pre ban or is Obama playing the mind games? It is all about those mind games. We know how much he loves Clara. It is going to be Hair Gang banned out. Oliver taking out the biggest speed lead. So we've got Clara with that 19% against the Samath with the 33% speed lead. It's our Summoners War European League playoffs day two. Set number four between Obabo and Pinkroid. Currently 2 1 up. It's definitely interesting to see this Clara. Could it be on Nemesis? Yes, it was increasing attack bar. So it was on Nemesis. It's a Nem tech to actually be countering this. Does it get a lot of those stuns? It does get a whole bunch of crucial stuns, especially on the Layla, which was the most crucial of stuns out there. Yeah, skill three coming in now from the Zima, getting that silences and the beneficial effects block, but a big stun. Oh, on the same thing also it does get a really big silence, but that stun skill one is still doing so much work. We have Layla coming in with her skills right now, but still being silenced, not going to be doing all too much, but also providing the silence on the enemy target. Yeah, bombs are available now for the Zima. She does get it with the stun on there right now. Clara can kind of follow up. Is there a defense break? Yes. Yes, there is a defense break, but we still have the skills coming in from this unit, this Ren right now. So he will go for the threat state. He will go for the threat state. Obviously right now as well, once Samat leaves the field, say at any point, he's going to be coming back dealing a hell of a lot of damage. And that's already and a good, good amount of damage. So pretty much the Asher is only looking pretty lively right now. Whereas I'm not sure if an Asher can survive against this many units. Sure that Tomoe has that bomb on her, but it's not going to do as much damage. It's going to do a good amount of damage, but it's not going to take it out. No, it's not right now. Asher going in, getting the heal block right now, but it's not looking very good on the side of a barber with stuns on him. Yeah, once again, just being able to provide that many CC things. It's very interesting to see that the Clara was actually able to land that many things, but Pinkroid was still being able to come back because there was no not enough follow-up. The deafness was there supposed to be to get the follow-up, but it was also stunned in the process. Yeah, this stun was huge on that deafness, not allowing any of those skill threes to come through. Pinkroid claiming three sets to one at the moment. In our best of seven, say one more set win for Pinkroid will secure his spot already in the final of our Summoners War European League. How do you think Ababo needs to change things up from that early set win? I definitely do think that he has to be looking at like those snipe comps once again. But I do think that Pinkroid is more comfortable with banning out that Adriana. Because we saw in the first match of Abo, he just clean sweet pretty much all of those units with that Sonya. But as I was saying, Pinkroid is very good at uh, adapting. So I don't think he gives another opportunity to Obabo to get those kind of speed units in that will be able to snipe those units as well. Exactly. Let's see if he does follow what you're saying right now, say. They're obviously playing those games. He's seen the fact that Adriana was super fast. Very useful with that third skill as well. Etna will be back in the picture for these guys. It is going to be a more pre-ban along with that Adriana. 
So we have the Adriana once again being prevent. We also have the more being banned right now. Is Obaba going to be back towards the Hay Gang playstyle? Because we also saw that yesterday with uh, Rexes. A uh, early pick on that Hay Gang does kind of force you into a very specific playstyle where it's actually strongest if you have some AOE CC kind of comp with it. However, the way that Pink Roy plays it, he doesn't really allow that too much because you have that Tian Lang. Yeah, that Tian Lang is very crucial as an answer to Ababa's picks right now. Partnering it at the moment with that Sekhmet, that skill 3, the skill 2 to a land defense breaks as well. So how does Ababa pivot now? Yeah, it's definitely interesting because last time around he went for that Athna, and the Athna definitely is very strong, but as mentioned in that previous round, you already kind of have to ban out that Tian Lang if you go for an Athna right now. So, Pinkrod is just such a formidable opponent for Obabo because of that Tian Lang in the back pocket, and in the end, Pinkrod also has that Julian that you always have to keep in mind, even though we haven't seen it in the match right now, you always have to keep in mind, if I lock this in right now, he might be picking a Julian at a later moment. In this position, we have the Athna, we have the Valagil, and Pinkroyd looking into some monkey business with a fire monkey. Is he actually going to lock it in, or is he maybe going to switch around to exactly that Julian? Yeah, we saw how much damage that Pafix's Julian was doing yesterday. Partnered with O'Reilly as well, could be huge. There's plenty of defense break options as well on the side of Pinkroyd to secure any of those kills from a Julian skill to say, how does Obaba respond to that? Well, the big question is right now, is Obaba going to try something fancy to maybe try to snipe out that Julian? Is that something along the lines of like a Rocky or anything of those death denial things? However, you could also just be thinking about like, oh, maybe I have to ban it out, but we're already looking at a few force bans and we haven't even seen the full draft of Pinkroid right now. So it's definitely dangerous to go any bruiser fight and going for CC kind of comes with that cigar, maybe locking in another unit that can also potentially CC. A Charlotte, definitely like that choice, is the way to play. But now we see that Douglas on the <laughs> enemy side and this Douglas in this position, uh, yeah, I do think that it's even a better fit than we have seen in the previous match. So, match, so Pinkroyd is actually showcasing like three must bans on his field. Yeah, that just shows how good of a drafter that Pinkroyd is right there. Say, so managing to already put three, kind of, you have to prove, ban them out during this drafting phase. Obviously, Douglas in response to the AoE units that are wind. So the opposite element or the weaker element, Douglas is going to be doing a lot of revenges against those units right now. It looks like it was maybe more of a quick decision to try and get those bands out, but these guys thinking it a bit of mind games going through right now, as we do have that Douglas and we do have the Charlotte have been banned out for both these guys. The defense lead for Cigar and Ababo, the HP lead for Sekhmet and Pinkroyd. This is our Summoners War European League playoffs day two. Set number five, if Pinkroyd wins, he goes all the way through to the finals, say, as Etna is taking that first turn. I'm not taking first turn. It's going to be looking at a segment. Does actually manage to stun the segment, even though the segment was not below 50% HP. So that's definitely a very nice one for Obabo to pick up. Because in that position, the Sagar can actually take over this match pretty soon. Yeah, he can Julian. Big hits coming in, but Tian Lang getting that additional turn. Can he use skill? To, going for that skill one to try and defense break. Yeah, getting that defense break, but we now have that Cigar being online, not being reset by that Sekhmet, and therefore can actually reset all of the units. We can now go clean in for an AoE skill two, and there's a lot of damage looking at the side of Obabo in this position. Yeah, the defense break landing there on the Sekhmet as well. It doesn't really matter for the Julian, because he is going to cleanse if he takes a turn coming up soon. Etna only with that skill one right now, but Sekhmet is going to follow up soon. Yeah, in this position, this is what Sekhmet wanted to do in our first uh, uh, rotation, but couldn't manage it back then. Oh, you're probably looking at resetting this Vela Jewel because that's a little bit less damage, a little bit less healing. Actually decides to go for skill to trying to take it out on additional damage artifacts. Yeah, managing to do that as well. But the Riley right now not looking healthy. She'll be looking for an additional turn soon. But Julian right now, skill one available into that skill two. Yeah, skill one into skill two, but in this position, everything is on immunity. Still doing pretty good damage, but it's not the kind of damage that you're looking for to take anything out. Riley also leaving the battlefield, and now we're focusing on what is the next target that Pinkroyd can actually take out. Because the moment he takes out the Gang, he's still not winning. No, and obviously with Julian on the field with allies with him, he's going to be stealing health if any tar target damage goes into him right now. He's going to be hoping for a few additional turns into that skill too. Yeah, definitely looking for the skill too, but on the other side, we're looking for the TL Lang trying to get setups with armor break, but you can't set up an armor break if you're stunned in the process. No, going for that skill too, getting the heal, not enough to kill, but the additional turn will not be enough. 
Also not enough, so we're looking at stuns. Do we get stuns from the Julian? We do get stuns from the Julian. No additional turn from that Julian itself to add in a little bit more damage, but we can definitely be taking out. Who actually goes for the TLN. TLN armor break on the TLN, so once again TLN cannot really go cleanly for the armor breaks that he would like to place. But also seeing that we get pretty close. Oh, additional turn on TLN. Does he get any stuns? Does not get the stun on the most crucial target, which is going to place three turns immunity right now. Yeah, three turns of immunity. Tian Lang does get that extra attack bar right now. But Julian, how much damage through? That is so much damage from the Julian. And it's Cigar against the world right now. Cigar does have the immunity right now. But the Tian Lang is hitting so much. The Julian is hitting so much. And oh, oh that is just so much damage. And we have the fourth win for Pinkroids. Pinkroid taking it 4 to 1 then against the Barbo in our first ever best of seven in the Summoners War European League. Julian say. Honestly, I keep saying it. Why can mine not do that? Yeah, a, a little bit more farming of like eight years of farming, I guess. <laughs> no, the, these guys have crazy runes. Like we've seen it from Papix, we've seen it from Pinkroid. These units just do so much damage and it's just pure damage focus because you don't really care about your HP. You don't really care about your defense. You just care about doing as much damage as possible and having as much speed as possible because that's where you get your turn cycling. That's where you get all of your cleanses in all the time. And the Julian is just doing so much work. Yeah, he is building it on 70% crit rate with that inbuilt on the skill too as well, dealing out so much damage right there. Say we were saying it a little bit before as well. Kind of the responses to that Julian pick can sometimes be obviously CC, try and control, not let it take a turn, or use a unit that will do an anti-revive. Do you think maybe any of the other opponents have got a Raki ruined up at some point for today? Well, Raki is pretty interesting, but the big issue playing Raki against Pinkroid is that Raki kind of still wants to go for a skill 2 cycle into a skill 3. So similar style as what an Ethna does. But the big issue is Tian Leng. So the Tian Leng combination with the Julian just makes the Julian again so much stronger. Definitely does. You can see now all of the highlights from that first match where the Douglas couldn't quite carry it through for a Barbo. Pinkroid going on to win 4 1 in that first set. Such a dominant player, say. Has all of, like we say, that muscle memory from playing so many matches, knows his units very well. And very typical, he couldn't even play with the Kitan Dasheng in those sets either, but still manages to come through with the Tian Lang and the Julian. How strong is his box? Yeah, definitely his box is very strong. And like I mentioned, or what I mentioned as well, during the drafting phase where we haven't seen the Julian yet, everything that you lock in, you have to keep in mind. Like, okay, if I lock in this right now, I might get the Julian on the field. Or if I lock this in, I might get the Julian on the field. On the other side, Obabo does have a few LDs as well, but we didn't see any of the Eleanor. We didn't see any of the Han. We didn't see any of the Bella that normally work very well for Obabo. So I'm not sure if those are currently just not ruined up because Obabo definitely does like to switch around his runes. Or maybe he's just saying like, okay, that doesn't really work against Pinkroid because in the end it's a lot of those attack bar push-ups on his own units with that Han as well so and same with the Alanoa so does it not really not work because of that Tian Lang on the field could it be that Pinkroid is a Barbo's bogeyman right now obviously Pinkroid has now advanced all the way through to our finals a Barbo is not out yet though say remember he will have another match against one of the players that's playing in our very next match which is going to be between Pafix and guts obviously now the mental strain is going to be a bit more he's going to have to do a comeback through the kind of a lower bracket side right now how do you think these guys mentally are feeling after that match i definitely think it's just all about like the reset like okay what happened back there doesn't matter focusing on the next match obabo does have his time to check out this match to just watch the stream or watch it somewhere and then just checking out like okay how are these two people playing and how can i counter that because in the end the two players that are playing right now have to go straight into obabo and they can't really focus on preparing against Obabo. Exactly. They need to beat the person in front of them right now. It is going to be Pafix, who was our third place in the Summoners War European League leaderboard against Guts, who was number seven, but has managed to make it all the way through to playoffs day number two. Say These two guys did play against each other in our week number five, where the points were split between Pafix and Guts. In that first match, Pafix managed to win with his Miles and Tian Lang. Uh, getting through Guts's Camilla. But in that second set, Guts's Praha lives to set up a kinky three monster skill two kill, if you can remember that one. Just how crazy that damage was. Obviously, Guts and a lot of the other French speaking players have been using that Praha to great benefit in our Summoners War European League. Do you think it's going to be an answer against the Julian and Tian Lang, though? Against Julian Tian Lang, maybe not as much because in the end you can't really put the sleep on the Julian, uh, the Tian Lang. You don't really want to be using too much Praha skill once against it. So I'm not too sure if it would work that well. However, 
Guts is a formidable bruiser, and Pathix likes to play a bruiser style as well. However, I definitely do favor the LDs that Pathix has for a bruiser style over Guts. However, Guts is still a very formidable bruiser, so I think this is going to be a very interesting match, and if I can do predictions, I'm going to say Monkey is going to be some winning conditions here. <laughs> Monkey business for all. Obviously, these guys right now, Pathix and Guts, if you can get this one, I'll be surprised it's a German speaking, but will it be checkmate for Praha or can the vampire live through the daytime? Since today, it's not at our eight o'clock time. It is at two o'clock for these guys. Let's find out in this match. So you said right now, Mehuan could be a winning factor for one of these guys through the matches. We also know that Guts likes to use that Eshir as well. Pafix with his kind of Vanessa, the Julian, the Riley kind of combination, but back pocket picks of a TN line could be very annoying. Yeah, absolutely. But besides just the Fire Monkey, I think that this is also kind of a matchup or maybe the Wind Monkey might be popping up. Because in the end, sure, it's a unit that is kind of bad into a Tina Lang, but might also be good into Tina Lang. Because the moment that the uh, Wind Monkey is stunned, it's actually gaining more attack bar. So with those kind of Bruiser fights, it might actually be popping up here. But Fire Monkey is definitely the one that I'll be looking forward to seeing here. But first of all, we have the bans. We have the Julian being banned and we have that Valajul being banned. The simplest way to counter a Julian <laughs> is just banning it. Yeah, just don't play against it. So we've got those bans. It is a respect from Guts. I saw him in a chat in a stream at the end of yesterday as well, saying he was a bit scared of that Julian. So like you said, not playing against it is always a good thing. Pafix coming in with that Cigar first pick. Cigar first pick. So now the question is, Guts, do you go for a fast kind of style? Goes for the Chandra? Does he lock in an early segment? No, does actually go for a Smice. So definitely a Bruiser fight that we are having right here. Yeah, setting it up already, we saw earlier from that match, Smicer, when she can get online and just be on the field, she's very annoying. But if you can target that damage into her and get her off the field quickly, she can't use her skills. Does Pafix continue with this Bruiser style for you? Yeah, I definitely do think Pafix will continue with the Bruiser style, but it's definitely going to be the question, which style of Bruiser is he going to go for? Locking in a Oliver plus the counter to an Oliver so a Guts can take it out with that Masha. Yeah, Marsha coming in there. We've seen how much damage she can do in that skill too. Defense break into the damage and obviously that passive allowing her to stay on the field even when she is dismounted. Guts of Berserk right now. You think he's going to continue with the bruising? Hmm. Mm, Raccoonie. Interesting, a Raccoonie. Are you going to go for a Raccoonie Miles or maybe a Raccoonie Mayowang? Because Mayowang, ooh, we're going back to that kinky. Once again, the repeat that we have seen from their previous match together with the Raccoonie. Definitely interesting ones over there. Yeah, we kept saying it before from a previous balance patch. Obviously, Kinky, everybody thought, wasn't going to be used. But in Summoners War European League, when in the right spot, can deal still a hell of a lot of damage from that skill too, especially with any defense breaks that might come out on the field. Now, the big question is, like, how do you want to counter all of this? I would definitely say that the Miles could become pretty interesting, but he's very low on healing. So, ooh, we got a Dark Pure Vanilla Cookie that actually has Oblivion on the skill too, which is definitely a very interesting setup, also for the Jungnam with AoE stuns. Yeah, it's the also skill 3 strip into the slows Leo, looking to be the answer on Guts the Berserk side. Do you like that? I'm not too sure if I really like the Leo. In the end, yes, Pafix did show a lot more speed kind of comps and the Marsha damage is somewhat nerfed. But is it that much? I'm not too sure. But we have the Leo off the field and we also have the Elena. I think it's Elena. Yeah. I could be very wrong on that one. Also being banned out. I only know because it's my girlfriend's name today, so it is Elena. We've got the speed lead coming in from the side of Pafix right there. It is our Summoners War European League Playoffs Day 2, set one between Pafix and Guts the Berserk. Very fast Marsha going in with a defense break already. Uh, I'm not liking the Marsha going that fast because in the end, if you had a setup from a Jongnam first and you had that branding on the, uh, in this case, Kinky already, you could have probably taken it out. Ooh. But the units are so fast on the side of Pafix because of that 33 lead, he might actually be taking out that Kinky altogether. Yep, he's managed to get the provokes right now. Oliver, is he going to be able to deal enough damage? It is to take out that Kinky. That is quite some good damage, but I don't think that Guts has lost just yet because in the end, the bombs are still there, the Raccoon is still there, the Chandra is still there. There's still a lot of stuff going on for Guts' team. But the thing that we're looking at on the other side is that Marsha, when can the Marsha get the backer skills and maybe take out any of the other units? Yeah, when can she? Because right now she's silent. So that additional turn isn't using so beneficial right now yeah the additional turn just makes it that she once again is pretty close to her skill too already and we also have this chandra once again being stunned if you boost up yourself right now you're probably healing yourself and you're not healing the chandra so it's still going to be stunned yeah so it does look for the 
Oh, getting more additional turns from Raccoonie. <laughs> Raccoonie taking a lot of turns, but same on the other side, that Marsha taking a lot of turns. But also the Smicer has something to say about that. I'm not sure what the number is, but 22 ain't looking like the number. No, it isn't. She does have that defense break now, Marsha. Going into that Smicer, a lot of damage to the additional turn, and it's enough. Yeah, in this case, also the Marsha pretty much has taken every additional turn possible. Pretty much same as the Raccoonie, and like I was saying, 22 ain't the number in this match. <laughs> no, right, right now. Oh, Jungnan coming in with that skill too, leaving the branding on that Raccoonie, but it is going to cleanse through that one right now. But Chandra and Raccoonie versus four. Yeah, Chandra and Raccoonie versus four, I don't think it will work. In the end, just taking out the Jungnan that has the healing on his skill three is going to be very difficult on this one. So, yeah, it's not going to be healing any of the other units, but you still have to be facing that Marsha, and that Marsha is only going to get stronger and stronger throughout the match. Definitely is right now. Can he get any freezes? No, but that Marsha keeps setting up the defense break. Didn't land this time, though. Yeah, didn't land this time, but besides the Marsha being there, we still have to control from the Oliver, from the Cigar. It's so many pushbacks. It's so many cool time increases. Even if Chandra gets a proper turn off, there's not going to be any defense. There's not going to be any slows. There's not going to be too many stunts. And Pathix is just hard controlling the team of Guts right here. Yeah, the more that he can control him, obviously can't get any of those skills up right now, and it is... Not quite enough, but he'll follow it up right now, I'm sure, to secure that kill from the Oliver. No going for the Chandra right now, leaving it for a moment. Yeah, leaving it for a moment, trying to set up the defense break and maybe just hoping for an AoE skill to take it out. Does take it out right there. One crit would seal the deal, doesn't seal the deal, and we have the additional turn with the Marsha once again to taking out that Chandra. Wow, Marsha coming in clutch for Pathix right there, taking that first set win against Guts the Berserk, say. Just showing how strong that unit can be, right? Yeah, absolutely. And in this position, it was very interesting to see because Pathix is normally saying, like, I'm a turn two player. In this position, he was very much a turn one player, very much going for the AOECC kind of style of comp. And it definitely did work out against Guts in the previous round. Exactly. We're seeing already then the bands coming in. It is going to be on the Sagar and it is going to be on the Tian Lang. So do you think Guts is going to change things up and go back to his first pick, Escher? Uh, it might be, it might be, but in this position, the Julian is there. So the moment that Julian is available, the chances of Pathix going for a turn two kind of comp is a lot more dominant right there. So once again, we have that A game being picked up, but we already have a Julian on the enemy side. Yeah, let's see how Guts can respond to that, that right now. Then he has secured the Escher at the moment with the Chandra, no, with the Villager. We know how dangerous that combination with the Hagen can be. Yeah, the A-Gang Velodule combination is definitely very dangerous, but it is that Bruiser combination, which we have seen a few times in the last two days, not really working out that well. On the other side, we have Smicer being picked up with the segment. So also going a little bit between Bruiser and still going for CC kind of styles and cooldown increases. But bringing along, crucially, some more defense breaks on the side for that Julian, if it manages to stay out on the field. So it guts the Berserk right now. How is he going to answer Praha coming into play? Going back to the Pry, I definitely do like it for the Bruiser style of Guts. However, Guts ha doesn't show that much damage except for the Escher. Everything has a little bit of chip damage. And a little bit of chip damage can definitely end up to a quite some damage at some point. But it's a very protective comp right now. And we have a Diana being locked in. So this Diana is probably the band right here because it's just so dangerous. Yeah, Diana banned out, Heigang banned out. So both these guys taking the speed leads, 33 and 24 between Pathix and Guts the Berserk. It's our Summoner's War European League playoffs day two, set two. Pathix 1 0 up, Guts the Berserk 0. Can he reclaim a point, say? In this position, where do you go for? Do you go for the Valajul to prevent the AoE immunity coming, or do you prevent the turn take? Oh, tries it on the Asher, but does miss the skill on the Asher. Asher can go for the boost, Pra can follow up. But the big question is do you actually have proper follow up, or is it one of those comps that just kind of follows up, but not really? Yeah, he's getting that immunity up now, so it's not going to allow any stuns coming out from Julian on that skill too. But more damage is going to plow in soon. Yeah, more damage is going to come in. Plus, the Smicer actually did manage to land that strip. The strip chance of the Smicer is not that high, but landing it while taking a turn is also crucial. Yeah, have a look at that. We're getting an extra turn from the Praha, dealing more damage into that Sekhmet right now. Who is he going to look to defend? It's going onto that Escher. Skill one, strips it. Strips it, setting up for that armor break, and that armor break, once again, we can go back for that skill 3. Does manage to land it this time, does also steal a speed buff, but is that going to help the unit that much? Yeah, but let's find out, Julian taking that turn, getting the additional turn. How much damage? We've seen huge amounts before. 6k hits. Those are definitely two very crucial hits. In this position, are you going to go for armor breaks? Because the units that you're trying to armor break, you're probably not going to be landing the armor break on. Is going to go for it. 
does not manage to land the arm break on one of the two water units. Yeah, doesn't manage to land them there. So Julian Kart was going to find it a bit more difficult right now. Confirming the kill on that sec met. Let's see what the Julian can do. A skill one. Can it take out this Braha? I don't think so. No, it's misses crit and can take it out. A little bit extra damage, just more and more chip damage to get this Braha off the field as fast as possible. Oh. But the Braha is surviving. How did it survive through? Braha still on the field. I'm not sure if she has skills available, but there is a heal block on her anyway. No skills available. Also, if she would take an additional turn, still no skills available. And it's pretty soon going to be Julian plus the Smicer against the world. In this position, you definitely do not want to lock in your skill 2 on that Praha. But where do you want to lock it in? Simply goes for skill 1. Yeah, confirming that kill right now. Skill 1 available. A little bit of healing up for that Vanessa, but that additional turn to get the silence. Getting the silence plus the stun plus the bomb. So that's definitely locking out that Valajul for quite a few turns. Plus, if you defend right now, the bomb will go through it. So the damage on that Valajul is still going to be pretty dominant. Yeah, Julian has second skill available. Is it going to be enough to take out? Ooh, double 10Ks. That's so much damage. And we just see it time and time again. This Smicer is doing so much work. But we have the additional turn. Ooh. Putting back the Sanctuary. Getting three turns of immunity. But we have seen it. Smicer currently on a slow debuff. But the moment it takes a turn, it can actually strip those immunities. But Ooh. so can the Vanessa do while landing that defense break. That's going to be so much damage from the Julian coming in pretty soon. Yeah, and he couldn't cycle out of it, Chandra, now. And it's setting up for a huge hit coming in from that Julian very soon. Yeah. He doesn't even have to use it, no? No, <laughs> probably not. Well, I would still do it because in the end, you do know that your skill 1 is 70 crit rate. You do know your skill 2 is 100 crit rate. Taking double 15k, taking out that unit, and that's going the second victory for Pafix. Pafix 2-0 up against Guts the Berserk. Julian, just a showcase of him in our playoff stage 2 at the moment. So we said before, how do you answer to him? Do you control him? Do you try and kill him with an anti-revive? It's up to Guts now to find out the answer, right? The interesting thing is, talking about anti-revive, Guts does have a Jara. Is he willing to dare that? Like, if there is one man that might be daring it to kill a Julian with a Jara, it could be Guts. But then it's also so dangerous. So I'm not entirely sure if we're going to see that. But I do expect pre bands on that unit as most as possible. But in this case, we have a cigar pre band actually. Yeah, cigar and Smicer. Smicer was being annoying for Guts. Well, against Guts Subject. So Pafik's taking it out. We've got a quick response with a Heigang and an Eshe. Tian Lang coming to the field, though. Yeah, once again, the Tian Lang on the field. We have seen Pafix not playing that much Tian Lang throughout the uh, league days itself, but during the playoff, Pafix is definitely locking in that Tian Lang, definitely seeing the value of that. And Guts really going back to the Bruce style with that Camilla. We haven't seen too many Camillas in the last two days, but I definitely do like a Camilla fitting in this team right now. Yeah, we know Julian is the back pocket pick though for Pafix if he looks to use it right now. So there is needing to be maybe some more damage to try and get through a Camilla unless he wants to ban it out. Yeah, ooh, a Mo Long. We haven't seen Mo Long in quite a while as well. Same for the Abelio, actually. So definitely interesting picks over there. I do like the Mo Long. I'm not entirely sure if I like the Abelio because in the end, Guts has so much Bruiser already and Abelio is more of a counter into trying to snipe out things. In this position, Guts is not really trying to snipe out anything. Guts is just trying to slowly Bruiser your units down. And sure, Abelio has good healing. But if Guts can find a really good fifth pick right now, Oh, that's actually a snipe unit right there, though. But I would definitely <laughs> yeah. still say that your Molong is going to be the one to be targeted for a ban, I would say. Let's see what he locks oh. in. He does actually lock in an Etna. Etna, a wind unit in response to the two water units are coming out. We're seeing the ban on that Sekhmet as well as the Camilla on the side of Guts the Berserk. Speed lead and crit rate lead coming in on the side for both of these guys as we're going in. So our Summoners War European League, playoff day two, set number three between Pafix and Guts the Berserk. He's 2 0 up. Eshe will be able to take that first turn. It's a slow Aetna, eh? Yeah, it's maybe a violent Aetna. Well, it has to be a violent Aetna because even the Velajul is highly outspeeding that Aetna. So definitely interesting to see what's going on over there. We did get two very crucial stuns on the Molong and the Abelio right now, but I'm definitely curious to see what this Aetna will bring. Yeah, right now we can use that cleanse, get rid of the defense break on the side of Guts the Berserk. Can he get defense breaks? It yes. is despair. It actually managed to despair that... Tian Lang right there, but if you lock in a skill 3 right now, you're gonna crit all your hits, you have to crit rate lead, but Abelio will take that turn. However, no, Abelio won't take that turn, because Tian Lang is on the field. Interesting interaction right there, skill 2 is available, but there is glancing, going through, getting a stun, but Hergang can cleanse it out. She's gonna do it. 
Fnaz gonna do it. And yeah, actually very interesting interaction because the TL lane was actually hard countering his own unit. Diabelio couldn't take a turn. Diabelio couldn't go for healing. Diabelio couldn't do that much because the TL lane was also working for your side of the field. Yeah, now right now he managed to get a lot of damage through that skill three. Eshe is off the field right now, but if Etna can keep cycling and maybe stunning, it could be end of game. Yeah, it's definitely working very well for Guts right now. And this is definitely a style of Aetna we don't see too much. Especially it being that slow. But I also do think it's probably very tanky at that moment. Plus, taking it out right now with two water units probably ain't gonna happen. So this is looking very much for a victory for Guts. Yeah, we know from previous SWC say just how tech Guts can get right now. And he's brought out that Despair Aetna. And it's looking like it's proven very beneficial in this set right now. Interesting build for him to choose there. Yeah, definitely an interesting build. And for me, it's even more interesting to say where it's just not speedy at all. Because the Fellow Jew was so much faster than that Aetna. So definitely curious to see at what speed that Aetna was. But in this position, it worked out very well. It probably would have been able to take quite some hits from those water units and still survive and then still do our work. Yep, so Guts of Berserk taking a set win against Pafix right there. Meaning currently the standings are 2-1. Remember, folks, this is a best of seven. Everything is a best of seven today. Wow, see? Has he got any more tech built up for us? I have no clue. It's it's definitely interesting to see. Once again, going back to the Julian Ben, I definitely do like that one over there. It's better to not play against it than to play against it. So uh, it, it's hard to say that Guts, Guts is also one of those players. He really does like to adapt over multiple rounds. But is he going to go back to that Hey Gang first pick right now? Or is he also going to be switching that off? Yeah, let's find out. He obviously knows that there is... Tian Lang on the side of a Pafix as well. So using these units at the attack bar, he will be able to take advantage of that Pafix. Chandra being locked in, speed lead. Very crucial with the skill three as well. Hey Gang and Smicer, quick response. Quick response, but Guts has played a uh, bunch of matches as well against Hey Gang yesterday. So he definitely does know his way around where he could simply say like, okay, if you bruiser with the Hey Gang, Hey Gang doesn't have that much value. Hey Gang has a lot of value if it's played against AoE CC or if it's played with AoE CC. But in bruiser fights, Hey Gang sure it can take up quite some boost as kind of a ragdoll kind of passive. However, it's not always doing enough in that position. So Pafix, what kind of bruiser style are you going to be continuing with? A Shizuka that's showing a l very little damage. This is 100% a game for a Juno plus a Veramos. Let's find out. Guts, we've seen it before from him as well. Juno, straight away a response right there. We know how crucial the strips can be. And getting all those debuffs, just eating them up, giving more health to the rest of the team. How does Pafix respond there? I have no clue, but whatever Pafix picks in the fifth slot he can take, all his 30 seconds is going to be banned anyway. So I definitely do like the draft of Guts right here because Pafix is showing so little damage and neither of those units can actually take out the Juno or the Faramos. So Pafix has to be banning Juno or Faramos. And the fifth pick of uh, Pafix is being banned. There we go. Veramos is out. Oberon also out right now, taking the HP lead for Pafix. The speed lead on the side of Guts the Berserk. Is that Summoner's War European League? Playoff Day 2, set number 4 between Pafix and Guts the Berserk. Currently 2 1. Pafix, Escher taking that first turn save, but Sekmet could follow up. Yeah, Sekmet will definitely follow up. Does actually decide to go for a boost. But in this position, it's all about the Juno. How much damage can she do? And how long will it actually take for her to get the stacks up, do enough damage? There is a little bit of healing on the side of Pafix. But it's all eyes on that Juno. And if Pafix can actually take out the Juno at a certain point, then he can win. If not, that's definitely going to be a victory for God. So we're all eyes on this Juno. So that is the winning factor right now for you, say. Smiter is going to be following up right now. Getting a silence, but she's going to be cleansing that Juno. Yeah, she's definitely going to be cleansing Ooh. that and getting the healings in. Also, the bomb not landing in this position, but I don't think... He actually wants to go for all things in nature, so... In this position, it's not doing all too much, and that's definitely something that Juno can still work off, of getting more healing in. Yeah, she's got that second skill available. Just going to put it on to Heg and get that cool time down again right now. I think he, as long as he can get rid of those uh, strip skills on the side of Guts of Zerk, he's going to be a little bit okay for now. Yeah, he's going to be okay. Well, in the end, uh, Juno could go for an AoE strip, but it's going to be cleansed off by the Hey Gang as well. So it doesn't really matter all too much. The Juno just wants to keep pushing in those skill ones. And there is healing on that Smicer, but the healing of the Smicer is not that much that you can actually survive a Juno that just keeps stumbling down damage into you. Plus, all of the other units on the side of Guts are doing exactly the same thing. All of the damage goes into that Smicer right now, trying to take out the healing. But this is an O, but you do have armor break on the unit right now. Can you actually do enough damage to a Juno right now? 
and he's nope. got heal block on the S here at 12 though at the moment, but my spice not getting anything. <laughs> yeah, definitely a very interesting fight where it's just super hard countered. Oh, we didn't get an additional turn. Once again, can try to land the bomb. Does land the bomb, so that's probably a good buy to that Valigil anytime soon. However, it's still the same thing for that Smicer as well. The Junos just keep working on that Smicer. Yeah, right into that Smicer, taking it down. Chip by chip at the moment. Probably a little bit more damage coming in. Going in for the Shizuka instead right now. That bomb's going to be going off soon. Bomb is definitely going to be going off soon. You can go for some protection with the Soul Protect right there as well. So in this position, uh, I do think that the Juno has to go for skill 2. At least the Juno is in a position for the skill 2 that it doesn't kill right away. So even if you would miss the strip, it's not that you're killing the unit and it comes back instantly. It does manage to strip it and it's very not lively. I'm just wondering, I'm seeing in the chat, have I been abducted by aliens again? I'm not sure, my voice might have gone, but Chandra getting that cool time on it right now as well. Yeah, Chandra definitely still working around, like, and in the end, everything on the side of Guts is just so lively, whereas Guts is just slowly chipping out one unit by one unit, and the Smicer being gone, and it's like, oh, that's a lot of buffs, and then Juno is like, oh, that's a lot of healing, and we're just gonna rinse and repeat that until the end of the match. Yeah, this is a long one, and hopefully I've been returned by the aliens and my voice is good again, but right now, Hagan can use that skill one, getting the stun on the Eshir as well. Yeah, also trying to get back that Smicer. It does give a little bit of healing, but in the end, I would say that Juno was able to solo this whole team from the start. And the other units were just like field fillers trying to help the Juno a little bit. And Juno's just putting in the work. Yeah, just showing how strong the draft was from Guts the Berserk there, say. Do you think it would have been different if maybe Havik sort of banned out the, uh, the Juno and left the Verimos instead? Well, the big difference about that one is if you manage to get multiple stuns on that Veramos and you keep stunning the Veramos and then might actually take it out, it is actually a lot easier to deal with than a Juno because Juno straight up just keeps on healing, no better stuns, no better nothing. Whereas a Veramos, if you keep stunning it, which is going to be slightly difficult because in the end you're just having the Gang stun, you have the Smicer skill 2 stun, we have the Segment skill 3 stun, but it's not that many stuns, you can actually lock it down for permanent stunning and for that reason, I think either or, I would say that it's just more of a drafting issue in the third and fifth or uh, third and fourth pick of Pathix, showing zero damage at all, being very counterable by those cleansers, and that's making it work for uh, Guts over here. Definitely that Juno doing some very nice skill one damage for you as well, sir. So. Yeah, it's and just it's, be... it, it's just skill one damage. Uh, it, this whole match was skill one damage. There you go, Guts of Berserk calling out to say four. That skill one damage, Juno coming in clutch for Guts the Berserk to even things off at the moment. 2-2 two, two between Pafix and Guts the Berserk, say. Showing how strong the drafting skills were from Guts the Berserk right there. How do you think Pafix can respond? He said different third and fourth picks. Yeah, it's definitely always dangerous to show no damage at all when you know your enemy has two more picks left. So in those two last picks, he was completely locked out to pretty much having any chance of winning that match. So let's see what we have for this match over here. The Fallow Jewels once again being banned and we have that Cigar being banned. Is Pathix going back to like maybe picking Hey Gang for himself? Let's see. Yeah, will he look to maybe steal that unit? We've seen how important it's been during the playoff days. No deciding to go already for his Vanessa. We know the combination of Julian could be following up. Yeah. More looking as the answer for Guts. I definitely do like this position for Pathix a lot more. He has also not been playing that much of his Kavaj, which he has been doing quite some in the league days itself. We go back to that uh, Hay Gang, and the Hay Gang is definitely that prevention against a skill 2 of a Vanessa. Getting that armor break in, wait not, it's cleansed. So therefore that Hay Gang is definitely fitting right there. But we have Pathix just locking in his LDs. The Tian Lang is in there. The Julian is in there. We have Smicer once again being picked up. Let's see what Guts likes to follow this up with. Exactly, he's going to have to think of a counter for that Julian unless he's looking to instead ban it out. But choosing a Praha with some of that additional ta attack bar, say, do you have to ban out a Tian Lang instead? What? Pretty interesting match. I would say normally you would say, ah, oh, this is a match where Diana fits really well, but oh, whoops, I have a Tian Lang on the field. And that's the same thing that happened last time around with the Abelio. It just didn't fit because of your own unit. Riley, of course, definitely fits in this position, but I think he has to be looking in another damage unit to make this work right now. Let's see who he's going to decide for then in the last four seconds of his pick in our set number five right now. It's going to be a Veramos. Interestingly enough, Veramos also is somewhat countered by his own TL length. Sure, there's a bunch of debuffs on the side of Guts, but in the end, it's not that much. And a Camilla picked up. That's definitely an interesting uh, 
over there as well because if you have the Camilla in and you were to remove the Riley, for example, I definitely do think that Guts is looking at a pretty strong draft. But then again, we're keeping in that Julian, and Julian is always dangerous. It is always dangerous if it can stay in there right now. Let's find out who they're going to be looking to ban then. In our set number five, this is going to extend the lead to a 3-2 for one of these plays right now. Remember, it is a best of seven, so there's at least two more sets that are going to happen right now. Riley being banned out alongside the Camilla, taking that speed lead for Pafix and the resistance lead of Praha on the side of Guts the Berserk. So our Summoners War European League playoffs day two, set number five. All things are even as Eshia goes first. Yeah, definitely let's see if that resistance lead is going to work, because in most cases, Tian Leng will be on the decent amount of accuracy, but Julian's and Veromosis might not be, so let's see if that actually does work out. This is going to come in with some crazy damage on that Eshia. 18Ks? Double 18K. Well, that's the thing with Eshia. Eshia has a really high base HP, but his base defense is near non-existing. Julian just eats that for breakfast. Yeah, and just like Veromos is eating those bombs for breakfast as well from the Smice right now. Dealing the defense breaks into that Praha. She will have a skill three available though, but Julian will take a turn anyway. Yeah, Julian will definitely take that turn anyway, and that's just the sheer power of Julian. And that's once again a Heigang on the field against a, a matchup where Heigang is not really countering anything. And that's just what we have seen quite a bunch, is where Heigang is used too much, and he ends up in matches where he's not really countering anything, and therefore he's not doing anything, he's not dealing any damage, he's not really providing any proper healing or anything, and he's just sitting there being eaten by a Julian. Yeah, Julian just getting those additional turns, dealing way more damage. No defense breaks at the moment for him, but he's still going to be doing that chip damage more than he can heal through. Yeah, this Julian is just putting in so much work. There's just a little bit of healing from that Varamos coming in uh, time and time again, mainly because of those silence, because of those bombs. And that's actually a very nice way to counter out a Smicer as well. Braha tried to get some damage in, but we're getting a setup. Armor break, armor break into skill 2, double 13k, taking out that Smicer. So much damage coming out from the side of that Julian. He's just going to be taking way more turns as well right now, Stay. Yeah, it's just taking more and more turns. Every time we're just waiting for Julian skill 2. Every time the Julian skill 2 is up there, the armor break is landed. Double 8 in case. Every time Julian has that skill 2 with an armor break, it's just taking out a unit. And he has that every other turn. Yeah, he does. I love him, Say. I have him. I love him. But Pafix are taking the 3-2 win so far against Guts of Berserk. Remember, it's a best of 7. So he still needs to get another win to get to that number four in order to get through to face off against Obabo in that next round. Say, so you think we're going to see a pre-ban of the good old Julian here? Yeah, we're absolutely going to see a Julian being pre-banned. Guts does not like to play against that unit. It's pretty much any uh, winning condition that Pafix had in those three victories, or most of them at least, was all Julian based. So definitely something that Guts does not like to play against. He definitely doesn't like, but there's still Tian Lang on the side for Papix if he looks to choose to use that right now. Guts the Berserk, not as quick to secure a hair gang in that first pick as you mentioned, say already. Didn't really do much in that previous match for him right now. Changing things up with a Chandra. Yeah, locking in the Chandra. The question is right now, also Pafix is seeing that Heigang doesn't have that much value in these early picks where they're both bruisering it out. Sure, Heigang insanely strong against AoE CC once again, but neither of those two players are really playing that this much. And therefore, I definitely like those bruiser picks of the Valagil, of the Smizer, of the Chandra a lot more. Yeah, let's see how Gus Berserk can continue that there as well right now. Sekhmet coming out potentially to look to use some skill threes onto something like a Valagil, say, partnering it up here with as we're giving all of the 30 seconds into the Praha, his comfortable pick. Yeah, definitely going back to the Praha. With the Praha on the field, at this position, you could say like, okay, that is where I like to lock in a Hay Gang, and that's where it also fits a lot more. But also what we haven't seen between the two players today yet is Fire Monkey. Fire Monkey would definitely be strong, but first of all, we have a Camilla being locked in and a Tian Lang. I would still say that a Fire Monkey actually does have some chance right here. Yeah, we're seeing a Wusa at the moment on the side of Guts of Berserk. Camilla may be a steal from Pafix as well. He's seen that Guts of Berserk has been choosing it in those fourth and fifth picks. Who's he going to partner it up with for Yusa? I would say Fire Monkey actually does have some potential in here. Sure, it's kind of difficult to deal with the Camilla, but we're actually going to a Federica, also a unit we haven't seen today yet. It is definitely an interesting unit. However, the big issue is if you take the first turn and your Federica is a lot slower, that silence from the Smizer might always end up on that Federica. And we have a Miles being picked up for Pafix. Yeah, Miles might be able to use that skill too as well and get a stun out on the field of Guts the Berserk, taking that 
first turn. Let's find out who they are going to be banning. It is a crucial set right now. If Pafix can win this set, he will win and beat Gus the Berserk and go through to the next round against Obabo. No easy person to come up against. It is going to be Miles banned out. We're going to see the Praha banned out on the side of Guts the Berserk. Whoa, things are going to be getting tense right now for both of these players. Guts the Berserk needs that set win as we're getting the fire HP lead on the side of Pafix with the speed lead on the side of Guts the Berserk. It's our Summoner's War European League playoffs day two, set number six. The crucial set is Sekhmet. Will she land, say? And she does land, but all eyes for me are on the Federica. Is Federica going to do her thing or is it going to go down to a long match where Camilla potentially can do her thing? Those are the two interactions that I do see with a lot of potential. We do have two buffs on the Federica right now, so the odds for Smice to actually strip out the immunity. However, you can strip on the skill one as well. Decides not to go for it. Decides not to go for it right now. And obviously the immunity is no defense breaks. I Meaning does strip by the shield. Does strip the shield, so definitely not what you want to see. This Federica can do a lot of damage. Can it instantly take out Smice? It does not take out Smice, but it's violent. It's not on Vampire. Normally it's so based that everyone is saying like, okay, Vampire on that unit or double nemesis on that unit or anything like that. But this one is on violent and actually with that violent proc took out the Smice right away. Wow, so we've already seen an Etna build on Despair and right now he's gone for a Vaya. Federica as well, they say he's going to probably pop up the defend as well. Over onto that Federica, not to allow it to get any hits on it. Well, the interesting thing is, Federica has a very low cooldown on that skill too, if she were to actually kill. In this case, she didn't specifically kill, because if she would have killed and took the violent turn, then she would have already had the skill 3 right now. In this position, she doesn't have it as of yet, but if it would take one more violent turn, that's another dead unit. Doesn't take in this position just yet. No, but can do a little bit of healing through the skill, of, uh, skill 2 from that Wooster right now. Camilla's still on the field, is going to be annoying, but there's no freeze action. Yeah, there's no freeze action coming in. We do have some slows going in on the other side, but that Federica does have the second skill up right now. If that second skill goes on a not so lively Tira Lang, it would be taken off the battlefield. But also on a Velajul, Velajul is mostly based on defense, so it's probably going to be taken out as well. Let's find out if it is going to be enough to take out one of those units right now. Segment can look to use that skill 3, resetting that Velajul as well. There is a freeze, but there's immunity everywhere. There's immunity, there was the armor break, it did provide quite some protection, but still, it's looking less uh, lively as possible for, at that position. A little bit more healing going in, but the big question is going to be, can Camilla provide a solo over here? Because soloing against immunity as of Wusa is pretty difficult for Camilla, because you can't cycle in those freezes, you can't cycle in those slows. And that is what Camilla really needs to provide a solo. And it's going to be enough to take out that villager. So it is going to be Camilla versus the world right now. That skill one going into a Chandra is. Does she get the freeze on the second as well? No. Ooh, didn't provide the freeze, but there's charming voice coming in. Cooldown increases. In this position, this is exactly where you wanted to do, to get that skill two in. Can't get skill two in. Also, does not get the increased school time in. So Wusa's going to go for another round of Witch of Immortality. Yeah, he's going to boost up all of the shields, all of the immunity. It's going to be very annoying for that Camilla to take a turn. But she's still healing a little bit, say. Yeah, she's definitely still healing a little bit. But the moment that the Wusa go for skill 2, it's just so much damage going in. And Camilla can't really win with that. Nope, she's not looking healthy. But some additional turns are trying to help him along the way right now. But it's going to be very, very soon that we're going to get skills rotating through from the side of Guts the Berserk. Yeah, absolutely, because you just have to get freezes on that Wusa. But the moment that you can't get those, Camilla can take as many violent procs as she wants. But she's not going to do enough healing. Like, her healing in the end isn't that much. And definitely not enough to get a critter and survive that from a Federica. With a victory towards Guts. Guts the Berserk bringing it back 3-3. Three, three. So say, best of seven. New thing. Look at that. We've got 3-3. Three, three, and we're going into the final deciding set in a best of seven between Pafix and Guts the Berserk. Again, Guts of Berserk coming out with some different tech, eh? Yeah, a lot of tech going on, but this is the unfavorable match for Guts because Julian can't be pre-banned. So Guts once again has to win against a Julian setup. Yeah, let's see how he's going to deal with that right now. He's taken out the cigar. Velajul taken out on the side of Pafix as well. Say, so is he going to look to go back for his Vanessa first pick? Yeah, I definitely do think he will be locking in that Vanessa, probably going back in straight for that Tian Lang, plus that Julian, probably going to be looking at a Riley. Those are his comfortable picks, and Guts knows that. So he has to keep the, those four units in mind, because those four units are most likely going to be on the field. 
What can Guts do against that with the Bruiser style that he has been picking up? We have seen that the Praha doesn't really work, the Smizer doesn't really work. A lot of these things just simply don't really work. The Hay Gang doesn't really work. There's just so many things that just didn't work. So what are you actually trying to find that would work? And Guts takes a full 30 seconds. He might actually go for an AOECC comp. I would like that. Going in for a Chandra and a Smicer then right now. If Pafix doesn't lock in a Julian and a Tian Langse, we're bad casters, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's also definitely a uh, an option right here. But I do think that, ooh, going back for the Kavachi. We haven't seen that all too much today. It's definitely an interesting pick over here. But as I was thinking about it, Guts could have maybe went for an AOE CC kind of comp. I do think that Pafix is very comfortable playing against it as well. Ooh. But we're actually going to see a Rocky in combination with an Escher. That could mean that mind games come in in the ban phase right now, say, as well. Do you ban out that Raki? Do you ban out the Julian, knowing that one of them might go through? I think Pafix is going to respond. I definitely do think he goes back for the Tian Lang, because in the end, the Tian Lang does counter the Rocky skill too. It does counter the Asher, but he actually decides to go in for units that will be potentially sniping him out. God's going in for a Robo. Yeah, Dark Robo at the moment being locked in. For Guts of Berserk, changing it up for his brother, though, the Wind Robo. Maybe this is the decision. Which one would you prefer? Uh, I would prefer the Dark Robo because of the element, but it's very likely that the Dark Robo is on Dispair and the Wind Robo is on Swift. And in this position, he rather has a Swift unit to be able to outspeed his enemy rather than a Dispair version. Oh, taking out the Vanessa then. Actually, being banned out on the side of Guts of Berserk. It's a deciding set between Pafix and Guts of Berserk in our Summoners War European League playoffs day two. Set number seven say, will Julian do it again? No, we have such a fast segment and the segment without the speed lead is outspeeding this Robo. So the whole setup doesn't work. We Ooh. still have uh, the Rocky taking a turn. You can go for skill two right now. Goes for skill three instantly, doesn't <gasps> kill. Oh, it doesn't manage to get the kill right now. It's meaning that Julian can use that skill too. Looking to get the stuns on that Robo. We're gonna build up some immunity and with the attack buff as well say. Yeah, that's definitely the position. If he had a little bit faster of a Robo, he could have went for cycling skill to absorb some of that attack, but not give Rocky that or like more of a chance to go for a skill two into a skill three. In this position, it wasn't possible. So now it will take quite a while for Rocky to get her skills back. I'm not sure if she has that much time. No, I don't think he will have enough time. This defense breaks out as well for Julian right now. Skill one still dealing seven K hits there. Yeah, that's just so much damage going in. We do have the Rocky that has some potential of cycling as well. But we have a boost up to that Julian. And with the boosted up Julian, Julian's just going to make so much work with those defense breaks. Yeah, he is. He's landing bombs on the segment, but it doesn't really matter right now. As Rocky is not going to be able to cycle enough, I think, to get rid of a Julian. And that skill too with the defense break. Yeah, it's definitely going to be taking out that Smicer. Could actually decide not to go for the Smicer. Leave the Smicer just to kill for the Masha. Which in this case is also very well possible. Yeah, right now it's looking a bit dire for Guts of Berserk. He has that skill 3 available now to take it out though. Does take it out in this position. We do also have Endure on the unit for the moment. But that Endure is not going to be there all that long. However, we are going to see a cycling of a skill 2 right now. With this skill 2, does he get enough attack bar? Oh, he doesn't get enough attack bar. Or doesn't manage to actually kill these uh, segment. If he managed to kill the segment over there, I do think that Guts still had a slight chance to win. Yeah, Pafix there claiming the set win 4-3 to three against Guts the Berserk and he will be continuing say in our Summoners War European League playoff days. Guts the Berserk, congratulations for getting this far. You have still got yourself the fourth place medal and part of that cash prize. I believe it's 1,000 euros for him say. I mean, he brought out some crazy tech. He tried it with the Raki, but it just wasn't quite enough in that very first chance that he had, right? Yeah, and that's also the difficult thing about a Rocky. You don't actually want to lock it in. And because you don't want to lock it in that often, you're not going to give it the best runes, not the best artifacts. And for her to actually perform the snipe, she needs the best of the best on everything. So for that reason, yeah, it's just one of those difficult units because in the end, even if your Rocky can take out a Julian, it's very common that you would trade one for one because the Rocky would be squishy enough to be easily taken out as well. Exactly. Those are the mind games right now. You can relive through the highlights of those 
first sets right now, say. I mean, I said it before, he brought those different techs. He had a response with the recce. It wasn't quite enough in that instance, but we saw a despair. Etna today, and I think there was one more crazy one that I can't remember right now. The Federic on violence. That one yes. was also something we normally don't see. And especially if she managed to actually kill something violent proc into a skill one, she immediately has that skill two back up, which is definitely very strong. However, the question is also, yeah, it will probably lower your rune quality of like how much damage you can do because there's so many units you actually have to rune on violent. So for that reason, it's probably one of those things that works once very well in a match and then you try it again against the same person and it's probably not going to work unless you have two. And Guts could be one of those guys that has two. Yeah, and I mean, looking forward to our next set or next match as well. So it is going to be then Pafix versus Ababo in that kind of mini set, mini final, let's call it, before they would go up against Pinkroyd. Ababo has just played against somebody who had a Julian. He's going to be playing against somebody else who has a Julian. What's Plus the a Tia Lang. Yeah, true. <laughs> oh, both of them have that too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, both of them have the... The difference is where Pinkroy does have the playstyle that he could also lock in his Light Monkey. Mm -hmm. uh, Pafix doesn't really do that all too much of like turn one comp, even though the first match that uh, Pafix did play against Guts, he did go for turn two, uh, one setup. But yeah, uh, there's a lot of uh, Julian... Uh, Plus Tian Lang's on the field right now. Yeah, just showing exactly how strong they are as well. That skill three on the Kavachi, love that dancing as well. As it confirms it for Pafix taking that 4-3 win against Guts of Berserk. He said it before, or you mentioned it earlier, say it's all about that momentum. Right now, Pafix has that momentum. Ababa lost 4-1 in that first set, so obviously the momentum isn't on his side. Maybe he needs to do the refresh, exactly like you said. Clear his mind. Hopefully he's been watching. Maybe he's thought of an answer to a Julian because we're definitely going to be seeing it more in today's Summoners War European League playoff days. Pwah. Sum up how are you feeling about those two first matches. Yeah, definitely two very nice matches. And it's also cool to see like a match actually going all the way to best of seven, just duking it out back and forth. But it's also definitely what you could see. Every match where Julian was on the field or potentially on the field was just so much more of a struggle for Guts. And that you kind of have to repeat like back and forth every time. Yeah, you have to go through it, you have to repeat, play what you've played earlier, see how it's going to get changed during this Summoners War European League. Now, obviously, we've already had two matches, but stick around, guys. We've got two more matches coming up straight after this five-minute break, and those are the medals that the rest of these guys are playing for. The black one on the end has already been secured by Guts of Berserk, but we'll see you in five minutes. See ya.
Hello everybody, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your five minute break. We've got more action from our Summoners War European League playoff days. We still have two more matches to go to see who is going to be crowned the first ever Summoners War European League champion. Say so we've got three contenders left in this at the moment. It's Pafix, it's Obarbo, and it's Pink Road waiting for one of them in the final. Who are you liking? I'm going to ask you, don't sit on the fence. Who do you think is going to be winning here today? Uh, I would have to give it to Obabo in this one. I do think that Obabo has more uh, experience with just best of fives and a better style of adapting. However, he does have to play that Julian Tialeng again, which we have just seen like in two matches being very strong. Yeah, we've seen just how strong that is. But right now, they've managed to get their way all the way through to this. This is what we're all here for. We've still got best of seven matches as well. I wonder if we'll get any more four threes along the way as well. We saw it in that last set between Guts of Berserk and Pafix. This is why they're all here. They want to get part of that cash prize. And you want to get a nicer color on the medal, obviously, right? You can see it confirmed right there. Pink Roid all the way through to the final, defeating Obaba 4-1 in that first match of today. Pafix managing to claim 4-3 win against Guts the Berserk, which will mean he advances now into this round number four against Obabo. Guts the Berserk isn't going home empty-handed, though. He has got himself a fourth place medal and some cash prize as well. So looking into this match right now, we've said it before, Tian Lang and Julian, how are you going to deal with it? Yeah, it's definitely going to be the question for Obaba right now. I would definitely say batting it out definitely helps. However, we do also know that Obaba doesn't really like to play against Hay Gang. So is he still going to be for those bans on those Hay Gang? Very well possible as well. Yeah, could be very possible as well. Obabo and Pafix say they actually faced off against each other in week number four of our Summoners War European League. Both share of the points, they got one apiece with Obabo's Dark Robo and Tomoe combination, managing to get through Gapsu and Co on the side of Pafix. However, Pafix responding in that second set again, not with a Julian this time. It was with Camilla and Juno managing to get through a combination of Mehu Wang and Minato. I mean, it's very different in a best of two, obviously, the style of play. Right now, we're in the best of seven. Do you think we'll see those units again, or we're going to rely on what we know? Well, I definitely do think we're going to see similar of those units again. However, Obaba also does have that Doomon. So Doomon is one of those units that can maybe take out the Julian as well. But then you're kind of looking at the same setup as uh, Rocky. It's like, okay, if she does it, it's very good. But if she's not going to do it, then it's going to be a very difficult situation. Exactly. He's had time to think about it right now. He's had more time than Pafix in order to prepare for this match as well. We were saying it before, Pafix or Guts, whoever advanced through that uh, last match, obviously doesn't have so much time to prepare for who they're going to be facing off against. And this time it is a Barbo. So it's a very hard person to be looking to face off against in this Summoners War European League. Let us know in the chat who you're supporting, who you're rooting for, who you think is going to win. I mean, it's going to be full, I'm pretty sure, of certain names going on into this next matchup. But just confirm it for us. We want to see everything. This is going to be an absolute thriller. Stick around. We've got both of those matches. This is your captain speaking. Final call for the Summoners War European League final. Sadly, we only have one seat left for a mister. Let's find out as we're going into our Summoners War playoffs. Day two, round four, set one between Ababo and Pafik. Say those pre bans have come in. And it has to be a Julian, and it has to be an Etna, right? Yeah, it definitely has to be those two units. But the big question is right now, does Obaba go back to the Heigang playstyle, or is Obaba also going to be adapting towards a different playstyle right now? Let's find out. He's not gone for an early pick on that Heigang, say, so maybe it is signaling something else on the side of Obaba. We know Pafix likes to use the Vanessa in those first picks as well. Are you looking for a potential steal already? Ooh, goes in for an Oliver. Definitely an interesting one, and I definitely do like that as well. He could have went for a Cigar. That's normally a unit that Pafix definitely likes to pick up, but we see a Tia Lang plus a more right there. Yeah, straight away responding right now. Etna is not obviously on the field for a Barber right now, but who do you think he's going to look to follow that up with, say? It could be once again going back for that Adriana plus Sonia kind of style, because in the end, Sonia is pretty good into a more as well. Even if more does get a turn, if he goes for his skill too, he will most likely boost up that Sonia. So definitely, an Adriana is nice. Already locking in that AoE strip with the Smice or with the Zima as well. So definitely interesting units right there. But then again, we also have seen that the segment of Pathfix is really fast. It is really, really fast, so it might mean that he needs to lock in another speed lead because at the moment, Ababa does have that 33 on the side with Oliver as well. Partnering it up right now, we are seeing the Kavachi. 
I'm not too sure about the Kavachi because in this position, if Obaba goes for two snipe units, the Kavachi is not really going to be doing all too much. Plus, I would say that Obaba also has a chance to go for a Juno and answer into a Bruiser kind of fight. This is his moment to pivot then, so he's gone into that Juno at the moment, say, changing things up right now, who's he going to partner it up for you? I would still say back to that Sonya could be pretty strong. Does locking that Sonya, is he going to do it? He does do it. He does, and Pathfix right now looking for a response. Does he also potentially need another speed lead? Well, I would say that if you go another speed lead, he's going to be banning out your segment. If you go for another fast unit, he's going to be banning out your speed lead. So in any case, you're most likely going to be outsped. So in this position, maybe it's better to be looking at a bruiser that could take down all of those units that could maybe do some work where you maybe ban the Adriana. But that is a difficult find as well with just those two seconds left on the clock. Definitely is right now. He's looking for that Marsha instead then right now. Looking for potential defense breaks coming out on the side of Pafix for Obaba. Who are you liking for the bans? I definitely do like that Marsha last pick because that is that bruiser potential. If you ban out the Adriana, which I expect is banned from Pafix towards Obabo. Ooh, actually goes for the Oliver. Taking out that speed lead then, but Obaba sniping out that quick unit of Sekhmet. We're getting speed lead on the side of Pafix. Attack lead on the side of Obabo. So that's Summoners War, European League, playoffs day two, set one. This is to get to the finals. Kavachi going first. Kavachi going first. That's definitely very interesting. But the unit that's moving after is going to be the more. There's going to be attack bomb. If you go for skill two right now, ooh, is this going to take out the Sonya straight off the get-go? It is going to take out that Sonya. So that is all of the damage, or at least most of the damage gone that Obama can bring. So it's now Juno against the world, pretty much for the damage output. But first, we have a whole bunch of silences. Is it going to re respond again with more of that S1 damage, say Juno managing to do some work for a previous player right now? Going for the stuns, but not getting anything. Yeah, not getting any of those stuns, and those stuns were definitely crucial to keep the units a little bit more lively. We're already saying goodbye to the Adriana. It's now just the Zima, can drop some bombs. But the thing is, you want to drop the bomb right now on the Masha, but you can't. No, you can't. There's immunity up on the side of Mash, but he's hoping that Juno can maybe dismount, but she's looking healthy. Yeah, she's definitely looking healthy. Plus, we still have the Kavaj also being buffed to have a little bit of healing going in. We have, once again, skill 2 coming in, going into the Kavaj, or going into the Zima. Not dealing enough damage. Additional turn does deal enough damage, and Juno is not in position to solo here. And Obaba knows that with the victory of Pafix. Pafix taking that first set win very fast in terms of the first set win there for Pafix, say. Kavachi being very, very fast and just being able to then use that quick Marsha to snipe out the Sonya as well. Ababa has to take that into account in this next set, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that is the position once again where you go for a little bit of fast pace and a little bit of bruiser style where you think like, ah, oh, Juno can actually pick up the bruiser fight, but you still have that Sonya on the field that would actually like to be more fast and speed lead next to it. Speed lead was banned out. Not taking the first turn, losing the unit. We are going to be seeing Etna and Julian back in this set as options for picks. We've got the pre-bans there. It's going to be the Tian Lang and it's going to be the Zima as well, say. Yeah, definitely interesting to see the Zima being uh, locked out there at that moment. But we definitely have the potential for Pafix to go back to his comfortable picks. Back into the Vanessa with the uh, Julian. There's no Tian Lang this time around, but there's still the Kavaj, there's still the Riley and other options for Pafix. Obabo going back to a Hagen combination with Velajul. Yeah, we know this combination can be deadly, but Pafix with a quick response there already into that cigar. Do you think it's too early for the Julian? I think it's uh, from what we have seen today, it's never too early for Julian <laughs> except the first pick maybe. So I wouldn't be surprised if he locks in Julian right now and it would do pretty well. But he could also go for a little bit more of protection style and maybe hold off of it. Let's find out. He's taking his time. He's going to be opting for a Miles there instead and a quick response of his brother with Oliver on the side of a Barbo. Yeah, definitely interesting style over here. I definitely do like the Miles with the Oliver. I'm not too sure in this position because Obaba is not showing all too much of damage. So definitely for a Bruiser potential for Pafix, it's definitely very strong in this position. However, we have been talking about how do you actually counter a Julian. Pushing it back with an Oliver is definitely very strong, but we also have a pace unit with a Verde Hill, giving everything on the side of Pafix a lot of uh, speed bar. Yeah, they're getting more attack bar, so they can take those turns right now. Ababo has that one last pick at the moment, say, but the damage isn't quite there. He's looking for a smicer to respond. Yeah, the damage is not really quite there, but on the other side, Papix doesn't have any form of healing besides the vampires healing a little bit on skill one. So I would say the bruiser potential is definitely there, but it's going to be hard to also deal with this Verdi Hill plus the Julian. Yeah, how is he going to 
get things going here for Ababu. He needs to pick up that momentum if he wants to continue and get all the way through to our final today. The Smice are being banned out and the Verda Hill, allowing the speed leads on both of these guys with the 33. It's our Summoners War European League playoffs day two. This is set number two between Ababo and Pafix. A Escher going first. Yeah, Escher going first, and let's see how much this Hagen can do. Doesn't provide any of the spare stunts, which Ababo was definitely looking for, but at least we can go for the Olive for four those resets. So the Fella Jewel skill three will definitely stick for quite a while, but we still have that Miles. Miles skill two also has potential, so you probably have to be looking at a reset on the Miles. Yeah, looking maybe for the reset. He maybe doesn't need to go into Julian just yet. Oh, he's going for it anyway. He doesn't want to see any damage come out. He doesn't want to see any damage come out, but actually the he's deciding not to use the strips because the strips in the end would boost up the units. And he's saying like, okay, not going to give you any more turns than necessary. That's definitely some good damage from that Escher. But we have the Julian already starting to chip off some damage. And it's just doing so much damage. But we finally get that despair stun that he's so much looking for, but not getting the armor break that he was also looking for. Yeah, the armor break would have been huge. He did get a little bit of healing back as well. Four is Oliver right now. Skill three available. Looking to put a full time into that Julian. Not allowing any more skill twos to come, but couldn't get the attack bar. Couldn't get the attack bar. So that is not that much cycling going in. And Julian, in the end, only needs one rotation of skills to actually get back the skills. You can reset it, but also the healing on this unit is just double 900. And the side of Ababa is not showing too much damage. And that slight bit of healing is actually helping quite some. Yeah, he's going to look to try and reset the attack bars right now. Putting the cool time again, just keeping him. But any additional turn, he's going to negate that. Yeah, and we also are gone with the immunity from the Vela Jewel right now. Because the Oliver takes so many more turns than a unit that can provide immunity for him. And for that reason, ooh, gets the additional turn and brings back the Sanctuary at exactly the moment he needed it the most. Definitely did. Skill 3 is going to be enough to get rid of that Vanessa as well right now. Julian will be coming very soon. And Oliver's not so healthy, though. Yeah, Julian is going to have skills up. Oliver is not going to do all too much when he doesn't have any skills up. And we're going to be taking out this Oliver. No, misses a crit, but Whoa. gets the additional turn. And that will definitely take it out. But in this case, goes for a safe play of taking out the unit. The units on the side of Pavix are not looking that lively without the protection of Vanessa. So it definitely is still a chance. Armor break. This is going to do so much damage from the dash. 5 Ks per hit is a lot and a lot of damage. And Obawa might be looking Whoa. at a victory right here. He might be, but those additional turns coming through, getting rid of the sustain on the side of a barber. There's once again so much damage. There's just, ooh, another armor break. Armor break is definitely very crucial over here. But on the other side, there's not too much HP on the Velojo in most cases. Does get a double miss crit. And a oh. double despair stun. So definitely this Velojo and this Hay Gang are putting in a lot of work. Yeah, and he's going to have to be putting that, ooh, a little bit. Is there an opening? There is an opening. Oh, this is going to be Heigang against Roll because this Julian is definitely going to be taking that out. If you focus the Julian right now, there's not too much HP from the Miles that you can actually steal it. So you might be able to take out that Julian right here. I do think you can. Doesn't able oh. to take it out on that skill too. And therefore the Miles has an extra turn. But even when taking out that Julian, the Miles would have still killed the Heigang. Wow. So taking it down to the wire on that one, but Pafix coming out with the set win to take it to two to zero against Obabo. Say, I mean, we've said it enough times, but Julian, phew, the damage output is crazy. Yeah, it's really insane. There's just so much going on for a Julian. And even when Obabo had the moment where he got back the immunity at exactly the right moment with the Oliver getting back the skills at exactly the right moment that he needed it, still couldn't make it work because of just the amount of damage that the Julian is doing. Yeah, we're seeing it there. The pre bans coming in already. Pafix taking out that signature unit of Etna. Julian having to be pre banned by the Ababo as well. I don't know if we'll see a Heigang first pick again. This time, say we saw Oliver in that first set. Yeah, correct. We saw Oliver in the first set, but in this case, we're going to go for a cigar. So that's definitely more of a steel style rather than what he was trying uh, before with. Well, an Oliver is not really a steal. No, it's actually not really a steal for Pafix as well. But Pafix answering with that TL Lang. And that's the dangerous thing. If you lock in an Oliver, TL Lang is on the field. TL Lang definitely does hard counter that Oliver as well. Definitely does. And with a Velojo being partnered right now with the side of Cigar. Ababa not usually, not playing, I would say, his typical kind of style right now. Say early Mehu Wang as well. Early Mei Wang, I definitely do like the Mei Wang in this position, but there's still a lot of picks of Pavix that can prevent it as well. But like you were saying, not playing his typical style. There's no Bella, there's no Han. I'm not entirely sure if those are not ruined up at the moment, but those are definitely units we typically see from Obabo. Plus, the Alanoa that he recently picked up has not been shown any day today. 
No, it hasn't. We've got Kavachi and Marsha on the side of Pafix as well. We saw how fast that Kavachi was, and he's not going for any speed on the side of Ababa, going for that Icarus as well. Different comp. Is he going to go for a snipe comp? Maybe together with like a Mo Long kind of style? Ooh, actually goes to a Nigong. Interesting, but on the other hand, I would say that Bafix is already showing quite a lot of damage output where he could simply go for a Rika or a Robo, ban out that Velajul, and I think it would do pretty strong for him. Let's find out. Rika's been banned Velajul as well. Remember, Nigong was one of the units to allow Ababa to get his legend status that you see on the screen right there. Attack and HP League going in. It's our Summoner's War European League playoffs day two, set number three. Ababa really needs that win, but Kavachi is super fast, which is going to be boosting up immunity and that attack. Yeah, more attack. So on this monkey, there's going to be a lot of damage coming in. Half oh. HP right away. This skill too would have normally done enough, but actually with the additional turn, does do enough as well. Instantly taking out. We do have the revive from this Nigong coming in. However, the revive is not going to be providing that much of HP. So definitely going to be curious where the damage of Icarus is going to go into and can it actually do enough. Let's see. He does have the skills available. He's gone in for it. Going into that smice. They're not quite enough, but kind of skill two. Take it out. Ooh, that is a lot of damage on that skill too. And the monkey is going to be back on the field as well. But I think the monkey is going to be saying goodbye pretty fast once again as well. Yeah, again, oh, another additional turn from that TN line. Getting the strips and stuns. There's so many stuns going on. And Nigong, definitely very nice damage on that skill too. But how long can you survive against the Marsha that is going to put in so much work with so much damage? Yeah, he's got the skill too, obviously, from the Icarus as well to do a little bit more healing. Sagan needed to provoke, manages to land it. Yeah, with that provoke, definitely helps out a little bit. No skills coming in, but we have the Marsha once again, skill two, doing a lot and a lot of damage. So much damage. Can Tian Lang follow it up? Yes, a little bit more chip damage away into that Icarus, and it's not looking healthy, sir. Oh, there was a very crucial resistance because there was actually a sleep uh, landing on that Tian Lang, but it was resistant. Also, oh. the Marsha resisting the strip, so therefore, not pushed back, not provoked. And the Tian Lang is still doing work on those armor breaks. Yeah, getting those defense breaks is crucial right now. He's only getting the provoked coming back, but defense break, Marsha against the guy. It's going to be going down soon. It's never going to go down soon, but we have a lot of healing coming in from this skill too. We saw it do like about 12k before. We have a little bit less damage on it right now. But the Marsha is just being set up for armor breaks time and time again by this Tian Lang. And that will definitely take out units every time. Yeah, and he's not going to be able to cycle quickly enough, I think, with the Nigong because damage is still going to be coming through against a barber right now, say. He came up with a different type of tech, but it didn't work this time. Yeah, definitely didn't work. And in the end, all of the units on the side of Pathix were very hard to snipe out. So the snipe comp is a nice idea. However, the Marsha, the only squishy unit that you could maybe snipe out, has a double life. All of the other units, the Smiser, the Tian Lang, but also but pretty much everything on the side of Pathix is just super tanky. So just a clean HP damage skill is not going to do too much to take anything out. No, Pafix managing to take it there. 3-0 at the moment. Remember, it's a best of seven. This could be the first ever reverse sweep, if possible, and a best of seven if a barber can do it, say, right now. But Or we're going to have the first 4-0 ever. Exactly. It's <laughs> first in history either way, which is what we love here. Pre-bans coming in. It's going to be that Tian Lang, and it's going to be the Zima. Yeah, Tian Lang and Zima. So we're going to go back towards a Vanessa first pick, most likely, because that is the best opener for that Julian definitely is but we've got a hair gang instead interesting one so in that position i'm not sure if obaba uses it normally that much but if he were to steal the vanessa right now it does give him a lot of options where pafix doesn't have a good draft around a julian and if you make it where pafix doesn't have a good draft around the julian you might actually take a point from him let's find out right now he's gone for the vanessa he's gone for the smiter the first two picks look more like a traditional obaba draft i would say at the moment say so we haven't seen an etna right now but maybe it's a bit too late now well, the Aetna could fit. The only issue is that you're looking at very wind-heavy draft at the moment. So you could maybe go for a Fire Monkey plus an Aetna, but I'm not too sure if it would do all too much. Looking in at locking in a Shizuka has to be careful to not be able to lock out by Juno Veramos combo. Actually, goes for the Doomon plus a Shizuka. I like that combination. I mean, it's brought it in already, signaling if you put a obvious uh, Julian in there, I've got an answer for it at the moment right now. But maybe it's the mind games from Ababa to Pafix. Yeah, Obab or Papix can definitely be in a position where he could maybe toy around a little bit more with throwing in at Oberon, just seeing like, okay, if it works, it works. If not, I got another three matches to play then. Yeah, exactly. He's in a very much a luxury position right now with three set wins to zero. 
against Obaba. How does he respond with that last pick? It's definitely an interesting one. You could actually counter with a Diana back to Pafix as well, because then there's just so much damage going in if you were to ban out that Vanessa, where Pafix doesn't really have the right protection against it, that it might actually work. Going in for a Lagmaron could do a similar thing. Oh, Lagmaron coming out right now. Let's see who is going to be banned. Who do you like for the bans? Uh, well, those. <laughs> it's just <laughs> hindsight drafting is so easy. <laughs> it is. We've got speed lead from Oliver, the attack lead from the Oberon on the side of Pafix. Summoners War European League playoff stays two. This is our set four. Ababo needs to claim a point here, say. Yeah, definitely curious to see. Ooh, can't Ooh. manage to kill it, and it's on Nemesis, so it can instantly try to take out one of the other units. Are you going to go for the Lagmaron? That is most likely the easiest target. This thing might be on too much HP. 41k, that is so Ooh. much damage going in. It is right now. Is he going to just try and turn cycle? No, he gets the Curse of Death onto that Julian right now and looking to reset as well. No attack bar, though. No attack bar, but we do get the additional turn, so if you uh, jump in a little bit more damage on that unit, you might actually be able to take it out. Once again, not getting the attack bar, but we're not looking at a very lively Julian at the moment. No, we're not. No stuns coming out, but the silences are going to be huge from that Smicer. Silence is going to be huge, stuns are going to be huge, and that bomb is going to be huge. There's just so much things going on with the Smicer in this case. It might be actually a victory for Fafix, where he doesn't need the Julian to do all too much. We've got a suppression that can come out from that Dooman as well. Looking to go onto, but resisted. Resisted, not landing it. It could very well be where a Smicer's bolt on 100 resistance. It's one of those bolts that you can definitely go for. And the Smicer's just putting in so much work. A little bit of healing. And this Oberon, we have seen it do a lot of damage. will definitely take out that Oliver. It will, and that silence not allowing the Lagmon to get any of the other skills off at the moment as well. And it just keeps getting silenced every time. Yeah, it's definitely this Smicer doing a lot of work, and that's the dangerous thing about Pafix. Like, okay, you figured out killing one unit, but then he has another unit that is supposedly incredibly tanky and does way too much damage on double Nemesis will, exactly countering that last pick of Ababo. Yeah, it's gonna look to land another bomb onto the Doom and he gets it with a stun as well. It's a war of attrition now for Ababo with Pafix. Yeah, Pafix just working his way around with that Smice. The Smice is doing incredibly so much work. There's just healing going in. There's a type bar a pushback going in. There's silences going in. There's bombs going in. And that is the victory for Pafix. Wow. Pafix with our first ever best of seven. 4-0 sweep against all the people of Obabo. Say, Pafix must be looking at this momentum right now and thinking, I I've got this, right? Well, the interesting question is going to be, who's the better Julian Tianlang? user right now because you we could even get matches right now where you ban like the opposite one and we're gonna see none on the field or you ban the wrong one and then we're gonna see all of them on the field so this is definitely going to be a very interesting one yeah must say as well uh commiserations to ababo he has finished his road in our summoners war european league that is going to be third place for him he will get part of that cash prize and that bronze medal of the Summoners War European League. We're just having a look now at some of the highlights, reliving those moments. Maybe Obaba doesn't want to really relive those moments, for, but for Pafix, it's a great confidence boost, right, Say? Yeah, absolutely. Especially like 4-0. It's very difficult to get 4-0. We saw it in the league days as well. No one was actually like cleanly winning that much at all. But then managing to get a 4-0 in a semifinals is really impressive. It is really impressive. And that has just shown the strength of the units is prepared, obviously. That Kavachi was super fast, allowing the rest of the team to really make use of that. Tian Lang getting those crucial additional turns when it was needed and managing to even take the Nigong out there as well. So, phew. Yeah, definitely very interesting to see. It's also very interesting to see, could that Kavach maybe actually be on a Swift build rather than a Violent build? Vio is the most common build that he has been showing throughout the league days. But having it that fast, moving in front of everything, including like a very fast Marsha, might actually be a Swift one. Might be. And I mean, right now, he's got, not got too much time to prepare for it. And neither does Pinkroyd, really. He's been watching those sets maybe from the first few he's prepared already. Changed a few things around in his box here. But this matchup right now, Pinkroyd versus Pafix. Tian Lang and Julian against Tian Lang and Julian. But, wow, this is going to be fireworks for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of these LDs doing so much work. On the other side, we have a Light Monkey King doing a lot of work. Played against a Kavach doing a lot of work. So definitely curious to see how this would work out. If you were to ask me who is going to win this one, and I can't say 50-50, which I want to say, 
Then I would give the slight upper hand to Pinkroyd because of just that adaptable play style that he has been showing time and time again in SWCs, but also here today. It's definitely one of those opponents that say like, okay, I remember what happened in the previous match and I remember my losing conditions and I'll prevent those in the next match. Exactly. Maybe to mention though, for you, say, Pinkroyd and Pafix played against each other, obviously, in our Summoners War European League. Let's take our memory back to week number four, where Pafix beat Pinkroyd 2-0. He managed to steal Juno, but Diana went through his whole team. And Kavachi survived, Sonya, because it was a Kavachi trap on the Sonya, and Juno cleaned up against the Shizuka of Pinkroid. So if you go on the stats, that's opposite from what you would usually say, right? That is definitely opposite from what I would say, but different day, different things. We've seen a lot of Julian plays here today. Normally, Pafix doesn't really like to play around his TL Lang that much, but he has see shown a lot of TL Lang here today, and I definitely like his play style this way. Exactly, and for these guys, I've got two sentences ready. So just because the first one that I'd written down was so <laughs> on point for right now. What do you get when you see a panda and a vampire? A confused draft, because they surely can't have both. <laughs> let's find out in this one, because these guys, let's see if they're going to be used and how well they're going to be used. They're going to have to play around it. There's pre-bands as well. Maybe we see the same pre bands say it's going to be a lot of mind games as we're going into this one. I'm so excited. I hope all of you are excited. Let us know in chat who you think is going to win, who you want to win. Will things ever be the same again? It's the final countdown. The battle for the Summoner's War European League champion crown is here. Pafix versus Pinkroid. pre say. Well, pre it's definitely the mind game because a Julian, we have said it, when is Julian too early of a pick? Well, it might be in the very first slot, but I think it actually does still work. So in this case, a uh, Pinkroyd is going to have the first pick. Does that mean that Pafix is going to ban the Julian? I have no idea, sir. And that is the mind games that are happening right now. Both of these guys, also guildies, say we were mentioning it before, being in the same guild, you might know kind of sharing tactics. I don't know if they've probably shared tactics over the past two days, because that's probably not the most beneficial thing, because you could be facing off. But let's see exactly how they are going to get into things. It is a best of seven. We're seeing a more and a Kitan Dasheng being banned out, say. Oh, we have a Chichi and Dasheng being banned out, so that is definitely not going to be working. Big question right now is what playstyle is Pinkroid going to be setting the tone with? Is he going to be setting the tone with, like, is he going to go for Bruiser, stealing that Julian, <laughs> does steal that Julian? Is Pavix then going to respond with a Vanessa plus a Tian Leng? No, actually, it doesn't pick the Tian Leng yet, so that actually opens up for Pinkroid to pick both of the LDs. So it might be the match of, like, what is stronger, the LDs or the normal elemental units? Exactly. Let's find out. He's deciding to change things up now. We've got the Smicer on the side of Pinkroid as well, so who's he going to look to partner that up with? I definitely do think that he has to be looking at some kind of speed leads. No, he's actually deciding to go for a complete turn two kind of style. So that does open up for Pathfix to maybe go for a CC comp of himself. Because in this position, if you were to go something along the lines of a Chunkplunk plus an AoE strip unit, you can lock down the whole team of Pinkroid. But you have to keep in mind, if you give Pinkroid an opener to lock in an Antares, Pinkroid will lock in that Antares. Yeah, it can do so much damage, usually built on violent for Pinkroid as well. Getting those additional turns can be huge. So at the moment, Pafix looking to lock in that Velagil and Marsha. Double fire into the double wind. I'm not too sure if I'm liking this setup with that much fire, because in this position, if you go for two very strong bruisers on water, you might actually be able to take that match. In this case, he goes a little bit more all round with the Hay Gang protection and then also a ball frick with just adding in a little bit more healing. But I'm favoring the draft of Pinkroid right now, just clearly looking at the elements. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, Chow. I always have these stories on stream about Chow. I always feel like Chow is going to do everything and then Chow is going to do absolutely nothing. Let's see if this Chow of Pinkroid can make it work. Chow. So he's brought in some damage. Obviously, Julian was his main output prior to that as well. Switching out for the Bulwark, which is kind of a weird damage dealer getting half HP when he gets those stacks. Obviously, how does Pafix respond for you? Oh, getting back to that dark pure vanilla cookie, but I definitely do expect that one to be banned out. Yep, you know how crucial it can be with the strips and the slows as well. Let's find out as we're going into this one. Who do you like for the bans? I would definitely say that Pure Vanilla Cookie is looking very much like a ban, but on the other side, I would ban out that Julian and see how much the Chow can work. Ooh, deciding against it, banning out the Hay Gang. We've got a ban on that Cigar. Speed lead and the Water Defense lead on the side of Pinkroid. As we're going into the final, guys, this is our Summoner's War European League final. Set one between Pinkroid and Pafix. Look how fast that Marsha is going. 
That Marsh is absolutely very fast, but actually not really in the right turn order that you would like to see it. It can tumble in some damage on the Julian right now, but it's not really helping you out too much. But the Oblivion is huge there, if you can get a hit off. Ooh, and the Fella Jewel's moving next. He's actually, that that's the way how to take out Julian. You just need another LD. <laughs> just get anything <laughs> with an Oblivion there. Obviously the passive can't come into play. Yeah, the Oblivion can't come into play, but now we're gonna be all eyes on the Chow. How much can the Chow do? That's Ooh. a lot of chow. That was chowing away at that Marsha. 27k hit there on that skill 2. Skill 1 available now. Putting more into the Velojul. Yeah, definitely the question is right now, like, how long can the chow be on the field without the other units being able to put up that much? And it seems that the chow is very strong, but might also be very slow. And especially with that slow buff on the field, it might not be taking that many turns. No, it might not, but Riley is there to help with some immunity and the attack loss when needed because he is going to cleanse. Okay, we got Marsha back on the beast, but Ooh. we also have to chow once again. Ooh, with a perfect rotation of getting a dot just on the edge of killing her. And for that reason, I had to take an additional turn to actually get a turn in at that position. Yep, and Belichel is resisted the... Ooh, the resist of the bomb that's going to give another turn to this Marsha, and this Marsha will definitely take out that Smicer in that position. Ooh, missing also on that your vanilla cookie towards that oblivion for that chow chow will get some more chow stuff going in okay, so chow's now taking out that marsha there's no skill three revive right now can chow chip away at the vanessa quick enough well that's going to be the big question in the end the units of pathics do show a lot more speed but there's still a little bit of time for those cooldowns to go in you have to be landing that skill two you have to be landing that oblivion right now can you manage it does land the Oblivion, and this is going to remove a lot of the damage from Chao because Chao gets damage based off his HP, but only through the passive. Choosing not to cleanse that yet either on the side of King Troy through the skill tree of Riley. Again, not choosing for it at the moment. Oh, in this position, you can bring back the Marsha, and Marsha comes back on the beast with an attack buff. If you land that armor break right now on that Riley, does not manage to land it. Otherwise, the Marsha would have been able to do a lot of damage on it. But the script can be coming in right now and getting the slow, allowing Marsha to come in at least a little bit longer. Ooh, that's the first hit of crits. And like I was saying, you expect Chow to do so much, but the moment he gets crit on by the wrong element, he's losing a lot of HP. Marsha going in once again. And Chow, what you expect to do a solo, is not doing anything, leaves the battlefield, and that is the victory for Pathix. Pathix coming out with that first set win against Pinkroyd. The momentum is in his favor right now, sir. We were saying it all along. How do you deal with the Julian? Is Oblivion the answer then? Yeah, Oblivion definitely seems to be the answer. We have seen it before with Adriana trying to do the same thing. However, in this position, it just worked out so much better where this unit could straight go in for the Oblivion and just make it work and then also have the strips later on for getting those slows in against units in Pinkroyd's position in this case, which were very slow. Yeah, they were very slow in this option right now. So we're going into our set number two. What do you think for the pre-bans? Oh, well, I'm not going to give it to you because I've seen them already. It's Julian and Moore. Yeah, Julian and Moore. So Tia Leng is left on the field. Definitely curious to see what Pafix goes back to for playing right now. He could go back to his comfortable cigar. The moment that he doesn't have the Julian, he doesn't like to play Vanessa as much. Probably goes back in that uh, cigar, but let's see what he will do. Is it going to be an early steal of a Tian Leng? No, he goes already and just continues with his Vanessa then. Okay, Vanessa definitely still interesting to go for that because normally that is his main pair with the Julian. Julian is not going to be on the field. Let's see what Pinkroyd has to answer on a Vanessa because against Vanessa, pure Vanilla Cookie is an interesting take because you're trying to snipe something out, most likely, but the Vanessa is already there. And most in most cases, you can't really snipe out that Vanessa. But we're going back to that Sean. Sean and Chiwu liking that combination a lot more, but on the other side, we definitely will be seeing a Hay Gang plus maybe a Segment. Yeah, obviously Chiwu with that strip then setting himself up for a Shan skill 3 stuns. But the quick response there has been taken away from Pafix, kind of like what you were hinting towards there. Tian Lang instead? Mm, goes for the Tian Lang instead. So Tian Lang is more of an opener saying like, okay, Pinkroyd, you could pick a Hei Gang right now, but the Tian Lang is already covering that Hei Gang. So Hei Gang is not going to be as dominant. I definitely do like that segment in here. Gapsu is an interesting choice right here. You're definitely going a little bit between Bruiser and not to Bruiser. Yeah, that's definitely what Pinkroyd is doing over here. The only issue with Gapsu right here is, is that Gapsu's passive of taking attack bar when the enemy is healing is not being activated as of yet. So, could be units that Pafix is dropping in, in the fourth and fifth slot, but he could also decide simply not to. Yeah, let's find out how he's going to respond to that then right now. Say so Julian is not on the field, so it can't be used. 
Poor, tough position for him. And Mayhu Wang can deal that damage, though. Yeah, absolutely. And Mayhu Wang can absolutely deal that damage. If he finds one more unit that kind of does the similar style, he could definitely take out some of the units on the side of Pink Red. The only issue is... Mayo Wang is the only one that actually really ignores stuns. However, Marsha, always getting immunity on her own turns, kind of ignores the stuns as well. Yeah, and we saw just how fast that Marsha was as well. Wusa, maybe a response in order to get some immunity, get some shields up to defend against it. But who would you be liking for bans if that's locked in? I would definitely say that the uh, Wusa is most likely looking for that ban as well because it's very hard to control Wusa. There's just so much shielding going on. There's a lot of healing going on. And you probably want to take that out. And from the other side? Sekhmet's been going out. <laughs> Again, too fast for you. Sekhmet and Wusa going out. We've got the speed leads on both of these guys. This is the finals. It's our Summoner's War European League. Set number two between Pink Pinkroid and Pafix, who is currently 1-0 up. Whoa, Chiwu going first, though. Chiwu going first. Does it land everything? Does manage to land everything except the pushback over there. But that is not the most crucial thing to miss in this position because Jean is moving pretty soon as well. He is moving pretty soon, looking to get that branding on the Vanessa right now as well as Juno follows up. Shan will be able to cycle through that skill 3 if he gets the stuns out. Yeah, in this position you probably want to do skill 2 because if you do skill 1, okay, it was still good enough for the TLN not to cut in. But if the TLN would have cut in and went for the strips himself, could have been pretty bad. But we have the Marsha once again taken. This turn is glanced on the first hit, so no armor break landing. Yeah, and glanced on that monkey as well, so we're not going to get any defense breaks or stuns yet right now. So skill 2 is available. Do you pop it on the Marsha? I think your first, well, you could actually pop it on the Marsha for just later moments, but the first target to kill is most likely going to be that Vanessa. Yeah, he's going to have to try and target him. Looking for the stun right now on the TN line. Doesn't quite get it, but that Squall is not going to take it out, but the additional turn will. The additional turn, especially with that dot putting it in the right position exactly for that kill. Armor break going on to that unit. Ar Ooh, doesn't get the crit, but does get the crit at a later moment does get that right there. It's going to be Chiwu going into the marsh right now. Juno's going to have to try and dismount that beast. Is dismounted at the moment. We, we also have a Gapsu just providing once again those glances. And we have Sean going in with another squad doing 50k killing that unit. But in the process, we also have Tian Leng with a additional or with the turn. Whoa. Not enough damage on that skill too. How do you like this right now? It's Mehu Wang versus the rest most likely in the end. Yeah, it's definitely going to be Mei Wang against the rest, but the big question is, can Tia Leng still provide some armor breaks? And I think you have to get rid of the Gapso, which is, ooh, goes for the Chiwu Chiwu. It's an easy target to kill, as shown over here. But the Monkey, that's definitely an interesting one, because every time that the Monkey heals, the Monkey will also give turn to Gapso. Every time that you stun it or armor break it, Gapso will cleanse that off. So I definitely don't think that Monkey has an easy match in this one. Ooh, that's probably an opportunity there if the Monkey can get a defense break into another skill one, right? Yeah, that's definitely what you're looking for, but I'm also not sure if this is the easiest target to clear. In most cases, Juno will be squishier than a Gapsu, but Gapsu is just doing so much work with the damage. You definitely have to go for skill 2 into a skill 1, doesn't get into this position, gets the branding on him still. Yep, and he's not quite there at the moment, and I think Juno is going to be able to take out that Mehu Wang. Pinkroid coming back with a 1-1 one, one against Pafix there, say. Yeah, just definitely very well played. Uh, the Gapsu and the Juno showed too much work for a Fire Monkey. That's probably one of those good uh, counters into Fire Monkey. If the branding sticks, if he can't land that armor break on you, if you can't land the stuns on you, then you can definitely take rid of this monkey. Exactly. Every time he is healing with that skill too, like you said, Gapsu just comes in. Oh, hey, I'm here, guys. I'm just going to do a bit more healing for everybody. Pre-bans will be coming in right now. Say, so do you think Pafix has to go for a pre-ban on that, Julian? We saw last time Pink Roy choose it first. This, ooh, blocking out the Vanessa and the Kitan Dasheng. Oh, definitely liking that lockout of the Vanessa because in the end, that is one of those core units for Pafix that he likes to base his whole team around. I'm curious to see if Pink Roy goes back to a first pick of the Julian. Yep, uh, likes to lock in the Julian. Yeah, I mean, if you can't have it, I'm going to have it, and Pinkrod steals that one away. Last time, Pafix did respond with a Vanessa, but this time it's obviously not on the field for him. Say, so do you think he's going to change things up potentially with a cigar? I could say Cigar uh, Chandra is definitely one of those openers that's pretty good into this. Does actually decide against it. Goes for him more plus a Tian Lang. Yeah, more and Tian Lang coming in. So he's got that speed lead. He's got the stripped options for both of those units. Pinkroid instead deciding to look for that Chandra. And the cigar. So definitely a very strong combination for Pinkroid right there if he decides to lock those in because those units care quite a bit less about Tian Lang. Yeah, they do. I mean, in that first set though, remember, say, Pafix was aware of it and brought in a Marsha at an early pick. Do you think it could be seen there partnered with a Smicer? 
could definitely be an option right there. But the issue is that Chandra is also pretty good into a Marsha as well. Because the moment that there's no immunity, the uh, Chandra can actually provide that slow. And then Marsha is actually a lot lower on damage. But we have the two puppeteers being locked in. And we actually have a very interesting unit being potentially locked in for Pingroid, which is the Angela. And it is actually locked in. Angela, I'm not sure. I think we might have seen it in the Summoners War European League. I think maybe once because we called back to saying Timbo had a Geldnir coming in as well. Oh, I am loving this Geldnir because if that Geldnir is on the field and that Angela is on the field, Geldnir is going to be providing so much healing. But on the other side, I would also say that Pathfix doesn't have too much damage. So he probably still has to ban out that Angela. So definitely mind games right here. All about those mind games. Say they've got nine seconds. It is our set three right now so obviously this is just to extend your lead in our current best of seven in this final julian has been banned out and the geldner so it's going to lead speed leads going in for both of pinkroid and pafix in our summoners war european league this is the final our set number three between pinkroid and pafix say going first kavachi she's so fast yeah she's absolutely very fast even taking turns before that more more is on despair only despair the one unit you do not want to despair but we do have some work going in from that Smice that we have seen time and time again do so much work together with the TL9. Looking now for the strips. Can he get stuns? Does get the stun on the Maw. Does get the stun on the Maw. We did get a little bit of things going on, but also not all too much. If he can take out that Cigar pretty soon, he can actually make it work maybe. But the thing is, the moment that the Juno and the Angela get online, they provide so much healing. They provide so much things where it's just so hard to kill anything. But definitely Smicer has something to say about it once again. Removing crucial buffs, placing stunts, placing bombs, doing a lot of work. Yeah, and landing that defense break onto the Cigar. The shield will pop up from the passive of the Angela right now. But it looks like he needs to focus that target from Papix onto Pink right there. Yeah, absolutely. In this case, do you also want to protect it with the hug? Decides not to go for it, but we have the big sword coming in from the Cigar and pushing back a lot of attack bars. Yep, that's going to be crucial for him right now. So that I think this is the opening. This is where the tide could turn for Pinkroid. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about what can this Smicer do. Because in the end, even if the Smicer is uh, stunned or provoked, it still does its skills. But the Angela in this position is looking a lot better to get her turn in. The moment that she goes for skill 2 healing, it's pretty much back to full HP bars for Pinkroid. And that's definitely a winning condition for Pinkroid. Definitely is. He's got that skill to available right now. More shields, more healing coming out, and the slows can go out, and the despairs from Chandra. Once again, Smicer getting that additional turn, but landing it on the Juno doesn't really help you, except it does help Pinkroid getting a little bit more healing in. More speed buffs, and this Juno's just is it slowly working on the units on the enemy side. It's just purely out sustaining anything coming out from Papix right now. There's no real damage coming through, right? Yeah, there's the only damage potential is a Molong armor break into damage from probably the Molong skill 2 or the more skill 2. But neither of these units seem that dominant right now where they can actually get those skills off. And even if they do, it's not enough damage to actually kill anything. No, it isn't. And again, that skill 2, shield, healing. He's just going to out sustain it here, say. Yeah, absolutely. It's just simple, the sustain game, and very well drafted by Pinkroid. Angela is definitely one of those units a lot of people don't have ruined up. But it's, as I've said before in League days, Pinkroid has like so many units ruined up, and he finds those units at exactly that one in a thousand matches that he plays, where it's like a guaranteed win for him if it goes through. Yeah, and it's gone through right now. Maybe a call out to our German caster as well, Timber. Loves to use that Angela as well. Can he get the defense break? Yes, and he's going to clean it up against that Tian Lang. Yeah, this is definitely going to be the win for Pinkroid. The moment that Pafix couldn't make a kill in the first few turns, we could pretty much already say Pinkroid's gonna win this match. The moment that the Angela is online, the moment that Juno can do her thing, there's just no coming back. There we go, Pinkroid. He sweeped it back, a little bit of a reverse sweep. Two to one against Pafix, I say. Remember, it is a best of seven, folks, so we've still got at least two more sets coming through in this matchup, say. Pwah. Pinkroid, show him why he's the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back champion. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely do think that a best of seven does favor his... Just how many matches this man has played on the level of SWC. There's pretty much no one else there, especially not in Europe. So for that reason, he just has so much experience with drafting, so much experience with finding those rare picks that actually work out very well in specific drafts, as that Angela and that last one. And I do think like the longer the match goes on, the more Pinkroid can actually try to pick up those kind of units. Yeah. Exactly. Pwah. 
we're in the final, folks. We've already seen some fireworks, and this time, Pinkroyd again, following trend, banning out that Julian as a pre-ban, and Cigar being banned out on the side of Pafix. Vanessa first pick, right? Vanessa first pick, most likely, but I'm definitely liking this playstyle of Pinkroyd saying, like, okay, either I play it, or it's bad. Ooh, changing things up. Maybe it's a steal with that more. We know how useful it can be. Yeah, absolutely a very useful one, but if Pafix goes back into the same style of drafting that he did last time around, he could be locking himself out of doing enough damage. So that's definitely something that Pafix has to be careful with in this current match, that he has to get some kind of form of damage in. Ooh, Gatsu being partnered with Smicer there at the moment on the side of Pinkroy. Tianlang is still available for both of the players at the moment, say. Yeah, however, TLN is not really countering anything on the field right now. So I definitely do think that the two players are going to be more looking into like a heavy bruiser matchup. But I definitely do like it where Pinkrit already has that gap. So because it's one of the better bruisers out there right now. Definitely isn't partnering with a Smicer getting those silences. Velojul, a good answer with that skill three can cleanse into all of the immunity. He's going to look to partner up with, oh, changing it up, Marsha and Kavachi coming out. So definitely locking in his damage right there. We have seen it's Marsha being super fast, doing a lot of damage. Kavachi being also super fast, boosting up for that Marsha. But we have a ball flick once again being looked at to maybe locked in. There's a lot of buffs on the enemy side already, so it's definitely an interesting unit. Together with the Molong, that's a very old school combination of trying to get a snipe in there. But I do actually like it over here. I mean, we say it all the time, Pinkroyd's so adaptable, can change up his playstyle, isn't so narrow-minded into a turn one or turn two, can kind of rely on both things, big box, big amount of runes, so many different artifacts available for him with that Molong. How does Pafix respond? Yeah, Pafix could definitely be looking at an AoE CC kind of comp, because if you lock in an AoE CC unit, let's say a Wind Robo, which would do crazy good over here, together with a Chunk Pong, you can definitely lock down the team of Pinkroyd for a lot of turns. Oliver can kind of do the same thing. Sonia could maybe snipe something out, but I kind of doubt it. And we have a Leo, which will probably not be on the field here today. Yeah, I'm wondering if the Leo will get banned out right now. It is with the Sonia as well, allowing the speed lead of Oliver to come through for Pafix and the HP lead of Mo Long for Pinkroyd. It's our Summoner's War European League Finals, set number four, Pinkroyd versus Pafix. That so fast that Kavachi. Yeah, that Kavachi is definitely very fast, but it can also boost up that more, which he definitely needs in this position. However, the Smicer is not being stripped. Plus, you can do some damage, but if this position, it was more of a Chunk Pong or anything like that, that it could have actually AoE CC, it would have done a lot more than just an Oliver. And now getting the bombs and the stun with the silence, of Bulver will be able to get off that heal from the skill 3 say. Yeah, that's a skill 3 heal and that is a full HP heal. So all of the effort that Pafix did in the first few rounds trying to get some damage in is pretty much nullified right now. Plus we still have the Moling going in with the skill pretty soon as well. Or not. Oh, maybe not yet. <laughs> He's just been stunned out and he did get reset by the Oliver. Marsha needs to get back online so she can try and take out that Smicer. Yeah, trying to take out that Smicer, but once again, giving all of those buffs just means Bolfrey can do all of his things once again. Plus, you have the Gapsul healing. You have the Smicer healing. I don't really see where a Marsha can get back her skills and actually kill one of those units, because Marsha is a good sniper of maybe like squishy units or like Sierra or a Sonya. But a Smicer is just hard to kill. A Gapsul is hard to kill. Plus, two water units, near impossible to kill. Yep, exactly, and Molong will be cycling through turns right now. Only skill one available at the moment. Two turns of cool time still to get anything back from that snipe. Seems to be targeting the Kavachi, but that's also a source for Bulwark to get some more stacks. Yeah, that's definitely a source for Bulwark to get some more stacks, but in the end, every turn that the Masha takes, Masha will give one stack. Do good, get some good damage into that. Can we actually kill it on additionals? No, I don't think we would. Ooh, but does get a stun and the silence was resisted against that marsh right now. Just a little bit more healing coming through. Keep that smiter alive. Yeah, definitely still quite some healing going in. We also have the Gapsu healing coming in. Did not get the freeze over there or did not get the stun over there. So still a little bit more chip damage going in from that more. Yeah, I don't think the skill one will be enough right now. So Molong can set up a defense break. Can set up a defense break, but also oh. does not manage to land it. Also, the defense break is not going to do too much damage because in the end, most of the damage on the side of Pinkroyd is all HP based. So the moment that the match goes on longer and longer, sure, the Marsha will become very squishy as well. But Marsha will get an insane amount of damage. Same thing for the more, whereas the damage on the side of Pinkroyd only goes down. 
deciding to use those skills right now. He's going to give full stacks to Bulwark at the moment. Can he get a stun with the more? Ooh, definitely was looking at that stun, but in this case, we have the Reckless Assault, but the Reckless Assault can probably just kill the Kavaj, but no one else. Yeah, but it's used very well because now Bulwark can follow up and reheal that Merlong as well and the rest of the team. Yeah, definitely going to be looking at what can this Marsha do because Marsha in this position has to be taking out the Gubso. Yeah, if at the moment he can get rid of her, it might be a little bit better, but there's a defense break opportunity right now to go into that Gapsu. Ooh, that is so much damage following up by the more, also providing a very nice stun. So in this case, if you get rid of that Mo Long, you might actually still be able to win Ooh. because this more is just working so hard, getting the slows in, getting all Ooh. of those stuns in, getting the double hit in, however, could not actually make the kill right there. Yeah, he's just chipping it down away, but he has got full stacks right now, so he can look to heal. Skill 2 will be able to kill that more as well. Yep. Not dismount. Not dismount, so... Oh, will this be one more turn? Yes, it's one more turn. Ooh. If you crit on this one, does not manage to crit and did manage to resist on that pushback as well. So the Marcha is not looking all too great. If you get two crits in right now, nope, does not manage to get two crits in, and Molong will definitely then clean it up. Wow, Pinkroyd throwing it back to the old days. Molong is back, baby. 3-1 against Pafix, they say. Just showing again how good he is at adapting to those different playstyles, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's always dangerous to see that Marsha because Marsha is one of those units, like back in the days we used to say that about Perna. Perna always likes to crit on the wrong element. Marsha is always one of those units that can crit on the wrong elements. You're always fearing that it might. Same thing for the Fire Monkey. But in this position that Marsha didn't do it and therefore the Molon could clean up. He didn't. Well, Molon did clean up the action. Let's see what's going to happen for pre-bans. Every time Pinkroyd has had that first pick, say, and Julian has not been banned, he's picked it. But this time, you can't, because Vanessa and Julian have been pre-banned. Yeah, Pafix is getting a little bit of his own treatment. He's been dueling the composition here all the time, and now he's like, okay, I, I understand it, why people don't want to play against my Julian. I don't want to play against yours as well. Yeah, so he's first. Wow, we've got some speedy responses right now. More straight into an Oliver and Sekhmet. Changing things up on the side of Pafix. Yeah, definitely changing things up, but that definitely also gives an opener to maybe a Light Monkey. We haven't seen too much Light Monkey today all too much yet. Could be paired with a Hei Gang, actually pairs it with a Chunk Pong. Yeah, looking back at a few seasons ago, to be honest, from previous SWC casting there, say we get in the Chunk Pong, we've got the uh, the Kitan Desheng setting up for some CC on the side of Pafix. How does he respond to that? I definitely would say that a Hei Gang does fit pretty well, because the moment you ban out that more, a Hei Gang definitely picks up against those units. Ooh, is he gonna go for a Lucia? It is interesting against all of the pushbacks that uh, Pinkroyd is showing on the field. However, against the Light Monkey with that many stunts, it might be not as effective. Let's find out. Cookie worked well for Pinkroyd in the press one, but we're going for a Kinky instead. I'm not too sure about the Kinky though, because in the end, Kinky is not that strong into full on AOECC. Plus, we also have another choice of Oblivion with the Adriana. We have seen it being pretty fast, and we're going in for Sierra. Wow, throwing it back a little bit more with some of these picks right now. Ciara with that speed lead, the bombs can be very detrimental. There is a reset on the side with Segment though, said. So how does Pafix look to use that last pick? Ooh, that is a very interesting one. That is a secret, but I think in this position, you're gonna lose your speed lead. And I think that Pinkrit would take the first turn, but we have seen that Segment being pretty fast. Let's see how fast that secret is. And it has 55 accuracy leads over HP lead. I'm not entirely sure if that's the right play. Let's find out. It's our Summoner's War European League Finals. If Pinkroyd wins, he wins the whole thing. Say, Cookie going first is going to put up all of those buffs. All of those buffs. Morse, can you get all of those strips into following all of those pushbacks? No, it's missing. Oh, wait, it's an Amtrap. We got so many Amtraps here today. But is this going to be... Well, we do give another turn to the, the more, more, but then Segment moves. Yeah, and right Interesting. now... Okay, Sekhmet has that third skill available, can look to reset, going into that Sierra to not allow any bombs, and lands it. Lands it, so that's definitely Ooh. a dead Sierra right there, because attack buff Marsha will absolutely take Ooh. that out. But the big question right now is, uh, Chunk Pong can do a lot of work as well. Lands the armor break, but doesn't get much more than the armor break. And we have seen Ginky do quite some damage on these skills too as well. So that Nem Trap right there actually did a lot of work. Did. Right now, there's no immunity over on the side there, so he's going to get cool times, but he's not looking so healthy. Do you have to try and get rid of that Kinky soon? Yeah, you have to try to get rid of the Kinky, because the moment that the Kinky is on armor break, that's absolutely the right moment you want to hit it. And in the end, Marsha still has to get rid of a few uh, water units, which is going to be difficult for her. Yeah, Sekhmet is going to be following up here afterwards. Cookie only with that first available. Can look to do some healing. 
3.5k but the defense breaks could come out going for that reset instead oh going for the reset instead i'm not sure if that one was built on some additional damage artifacts otherwise you could have maybe went for a skill two and tried to kill something in this position you probably still have to get rid of that more first does go for the more Ooh. once again the marsha double miss crits so Marsha in this position, it was critting a lot on water before, but in the moment you needed it most, it disappeared. Oh, she's getting additional turns now, but they're not going to be useful from that poor map. More passive. Skill 2 is putting it down on the cookie. And that's going to confirm it for Pinkroy, taking it 4 to 1 win against Pafix in our Summoner's War European League. Say, so take me through those last moments. Oh, that was really insane. Like, we have seen... We actually mentioned it just before. Marsha is so likely to crit on fire. And if she actually did crit on fire, she would have probably won that match over there. But also that secret as a Nem Trap, that is so nice. Because in the end, you get boost of the attack bar. You get boost of attack buff. And you can just take over from there. And it was actually very well planned. Kinky in the end couldn't really do its thing. It was armor broken at some point. But it was definitely a very nice match altogether. It was a really nice match. I mean, we saw a lot of the Julian being picked up by Pinkroy during those sets as well. But the Marsha from Pafix tried to respond as much as possible, like you were saying. But it just wasn't quite enough. And again, we're still saying that same name, say, for all of RTA in Europe. Pinkroy. Yeah, once again, back to back to back to back. Winner of anything in Europe. This man has to win the finals. Yeah, it's the... <laughs> It's this and also the legend thing on his uh, true, true. stats when we're going in. Those are the things that are missing. Hopefully, uh, he also has his 30 in TOA hell, but we'd need to check that. And then he would maybe have a fully complete uh, record book, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Please. There we go. Living through those moments right there, managing to change things up with even a Shan coming in. Gapsu actually coming out clutch for him in a lot of those matches as well, taking out the Mehu Wang with the Juno as well. Pwah. It has been a crazy eight weeks here as part of the Summoner's War European League. And it's all come to this. Pinkroid is your first place, first ever champion of our Summoner's War European League. Obvious commiserations there to Pafix coming in. Still second place in Europe, which is a feat in itself, right, sir? Yeah, absolutely. And Pafix is definitely so, uh, one that we're going to be seeing in SWC once again because he played absolutely well. If he gets a little bit more experience with like the drafting phase or finding those really rare picks that Pinkroyd is so good in, like that Angela that just was picked up and just worked out so well. If Pafix can get on the same level at some point with just a little bit more experience, he can do very well in SWC as well. Exactly. It is all about that experience, gaining that experience. We say it all the time and we might get laughed about it as well, but the muscle memory, what's in your brain, you've picked those things so many times, you know how it's going to work. You can kind of try and foresee what is happening from a match during even the draft phase. That's when you can kind of skip up to that next level, say, right? So for all of the people watching, if you wanted to try and improve, yes, look at how these guys are playing, but remember the rune quality, the artifact quality, is very different they put a lot of time and effort into making sure it's the best of the best but that's why they're here that's why they're in the summoners war european league and it's been i've loved every minute of it sir how have you found it yeah absolutely and also guys in chat let me know what you guys thought about all of the eight weeks that we had so far leading up to the playoffs right now i absolutely love this i love casting it with you uh, sam thank you very much for that as well and yeah, I literally just loved every moment of it. But guys, before you go away, like I know like people are like, oh, last match, click exit. No, 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 we're not done yet. We're, we're, we're not going to leave you guys empty handed. Just waiting for the confirmation that I can show in the chat. But of course, we're going to have one more coupon code, right? Why not? Yeah, exactly. We'll be having another coupon code. So hopefully one of you guys can get something out of the mystical scrolls that will be coming your way. Maybe it's going to be a Vanessa on the side of Pafix. Maybe it's going to be something different from the side of... Uh, Pink Ride obviously it won't be a Tian Lang or a Julian because well, they will you, be you could, scrolls. <laughs> you, you could get a dupe and then you get three yep. LD scrolls and then you get your Julian and Tian Lang. Yeah, exactly. okay, never mind. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wishful thinking, right? Wishful, wishful thinking. But for all of you guys, I hope you did love it. And I'd like to say as well, big thank you to you, sir. Your insight in these matches is really incredible. I mean, it's so much so that I think half the time it goes over my head. And I think probably most of the others, but you say it in such a nice way for everyone. And for all of you guys in the chat as well, let us know. I mean, 
We'll likely be doing more tournaments in the future. So if there's any feedback that you want to give to us, we can always look to incorporate that into our casting because we want to give you guys the best experience possible in the Summoner's War European League. And I think we can yeah. go for it. Eh? We have a European champion for another five mystical scrolls. Exactly. So you need to type in European champion either in game or using the different code that will be shared in chat. It is European champion, so don't type in Pinkroid. That won't get you the code. You need to put European champion itself uh, in order to get that. It is going to be five mystical scrolls, and it is going to be 200k mana. So hopefully you will get yourself a brand new Nat 5. There is confirmation of the playoffs bracket. You can see there Pinkroid managing to take the win against Pafix with 4-1. So first place for Pinkroid, second place for Pafix, third place for Abarbo, and fourth place for Guts the Berserk. But not to remember or not to forget all of the other players that have been with us. We had a total of 12. Eight of them made it all the way through to these playoffs. But the whole 12, big congratulations. Thank you to all of you. Was there any, apart from Pinkroid, I would say, say any standout player for you that you're excited to see more of in the future? Well, I definitely uh, like to see those newcomers. Like in the end, Pinkroid, Obabo, Ruxus, we have seen those players like come in time and time again. But we also saw Angel, we saw Adri, we saw Sam B. Sepp, all of those newcomers that actually put up really good matches as well. Exactly. Maybe we might see one of you from the chat as well in the next kind of competition that we have. I mean, there's still all to play for. You've got another season still for everything to do with SWC. And this is the Summoner's War European League. That is everything from us folks and i hope you've really really enjoyed being with us on all of those wednesday evenings and even the friday and the saturday as well maybe some housekeeping for you you might have already seen that uh, tour of europe is back this year as well very soon we're going to be over in frankfurt so if you haven't already got your ticket make sure you're just having a look around on all of the socials all of the other venues uh, in terms of the places that we're going, the times and all of this will be shared over the coming weeks into the rest of the year. But we hope to see you at many of the events as possible in person. It's lovely to meet all of you. Maybe there's some free gifts and everything for you as well. And obviously it is 10 years. It's a 10 year anniversary for Summoner's War. So we will be celebrating everything to do with that. Uh, and there's plenty more to come. Plenty, plenty more to come and more action on the way. So I've got any final words? No, I just lost every moment of it. And definitely, if you have the chance to be at any of those meetups, I always recommend to go to those meetups because we have seen it time and time again. A lot of people say it as well. The community is always so nice. It's so supportive. Uh, maybe you have a little bit of like uh, rivalry in the game, but the moment you see each other in person, it's always nice. You just have a drink, you have a laugh. You can maybe win some free gifts. It's always recommended to go there if you're like nearby or you could maybe just travel out to one of those events. Definitely highly recommended to do, and those are my final words as well. Exactly. We'll be happy to see you at any of those. And if you do come over, say hi. We're always ready for a chat, maybe even a drink as well, but we'll speak about that a little bit later. Maybe not on stream, but <laughs> thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed everything to do with the Summoner's War European League. Who knows? Maybe we'll be back next year. It's something that will be discussed. And for Pinkroid, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. There is obviously the 5,000 euro cash prize that he has taken home with him, as well as that particular gold medal as well for the rest of the top four as well. It's been an incredible time. I keep saying it enough times, but it just really is that incredible. Thank you all, and we'll see you very, very soon. See ya!